Mike, are, will we be ready to go at 4.30? I believe we will. We are starting a, um, a chat with our interpreters in case we do need to contact them for anything. And I'll let you know. I'll, I'll be the one cutting in if uh, we're having any kind of issue okay. with that. Thank you. But other than that, yes, yeah, staff will be ready at 4.30. And Thank all you. commissioners that are planning on being here, I think are here. Thank you. Okay, it is 4.30 um, and I would like to call the September 23rd, 2021 meeting of the Santa Rosa Planning Commission to order. Before we start, I wanted to let everyone know that at this meeting, we will be having an interpreter on the Spanish channel. Uh, I'd like to ask that the interpreter currently on the Spanish channel to commence translation of the meeting. To join the Spanish channel, click on the interpretation icon on the Zoom toolbar, which is also a globe. Once you join the Spanish channel, please shut off your main audio so you clearly hear the Spanish translation. This is the first time the Planning Commission has had Spanish translation via Zoom, and I would like to thank the community members who requested this. Um, and I would like to encourage all of us maybe to speak a little slower than we normally do uh, with the translation. Um, and as many things happening for the first time, if we have some hiccups along the way, um, I'd like to ask for everybody's indulgence and patience. And uh, we may end up taking uh, a couple of breaks during the meeting as we work through this. So. Um, and I'd like to read the following statement. Uh, due to provisions of the governor's executive orders N25-20 and N29-20, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the planning commissioners will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Commissioners and staff, are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item four, public comment, or during our two public hearing items tonight will be able to do so by raising their hand and will be given the ability to address the commission. Mr. Maloney, uh, would you like to call roll? Thank you, Chair Weeks. Yes, um, one moment. I think the, Sp the Spanish translator would like to, um, on the English side, state um, in, in Spanish the instructions that you just gave. Thank you. If we can give an opportunity for that, and then I'll call. It'll be one second, two weeks. We're having a technical issue. We're going to move one of them back. One moment.
One moment, Chair Weeks. This is Charles, the Spanish interpreter. I'll come in now. La interpretación en español está disponible y las personas quienes desean escuchar en español pueden pasar al canal de español. Para cambiar de canal, haga clic en el icono de interpretación ubicado en la barra de herramientas de Zoom para ese globo terráqueo. Ya que se una al canal de español, recomendamos que apaguen el audio principal para poder escuchar la interpretación claramente. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Uh, let the record reflect that all commissioners are present except Commissioner Okrepke, and we can move on with the meeting now. Thank you. Um, so with that, um, we'll move on to item 2.1, which is study session, which we do not have one tonight. Um, item three is approval of minutes. We have minutes for both the 12th and the 9th, I'm sorry, for both August 12th and September 9th meeting. Are there any changes to e either of those minutes? Okay, seeing none. Um, item four, public comment. Uh, this is now the time for public comment for any item that is not on the agenda tonight. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so, and your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. And I would like to reiterate that this is for items that are not on the agenda tonight. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Sorry, we're playing some catch up on the tech side over here. Um, okay. We are on item four public comments. We have two hands raised. Uh, I'll go ahead and first as uh, Anna Salgado. We're gonna give you permission to speak. Yeah. You can unmute yourself and once you start speaking, the timer will start. Uh, sí, buenas tardes. No sé si me escuchan. Estoy teniendo problemas. Un momento, por favor. Me escuchan? Un momento, por favor. Ok, 
Yeah, Mario. Chair, we just one moment. We're moving one of the interpreters over. Um, I'm, like we said I'm at the beginning of this meeting, to anybody to watching it. or listening, we're still learning how to use this um, <laughs> side of the technology. So if you can give us um, as much patience as possible. Buenas um, tardes. Le estoy escuchando. Sí, uh, estaba escuchando que estaban pensando que yo quiero comentar. Lo que pasa quería comentar eso, que tenía problema con el, la traducción y aparte también en, en hacer un mute al mío, pero algo es de parte de ustedes que me estaba fallando. No, I just wanted to let you all know that I was I wanted to speak when my turn comes, but not this moment. It's just that I wasn't able to to get any signal, so I said I was just trying to to, to test to see whether you hear me or not. Thank you very much. Gracias. A usted, gracias. Thank you. All right, thank you, one moment. Next, we have a phone caller. Um, their last four digits, their phone number is 5549. We're gonna give you permission to speak now. And you'll have to press star six caller to be able to speak. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can we you can hear, hear me. you. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I'm calling because I believe that the Planning Commission could follow the model of the Santa Rosa City Council and begin to hold these meetings again in person at the Santa Rosa City Council Chambers with appropriate social distancing. We've all known how to wear the masks now after 18 months. So please make these meetings accessible again to the community. As you just saw by the difficulties that you have with the technology, it actually is a burden upon the community also. And it would be nice if you'd start the meetings later in the day now, because you don't have that many things that you deal with. You could hold these meetings after 5.15, 5.30, so the working class people could get home and they could get out to a meeting or participate in this hybrid approach that the city council is taking with Zoom and telephone calls and in person. It's really important because during the last 19 months since I actually was able to be at a planning commission meeting where some dishonesty occurred, a lot of people in my neighborhood over in Roseland Creek have lost faith in how our city government is operating and how the appointed officials are representing, not necessarily representing communities, but I guess some might say points of view and um, interests, special interests. It's difficult for communities such as mine, a disadvantaged, underserved, overburdened community, which has the lowest human development index in all of Sonoma County since the 2014 portrait of Sonoma County declared that. And then our next two census districts of Roseland and Shepherd, we're at the bottom of the barrel and we're not getting service because we don't have people represented on these boards and commissions. We've gotten one man elected and has to split his interests with South Park. So we're still struggling to get any kind of fairness, social equity, balance, environmental justice, the important things you're supposed to be looking at in the general plan update, which most folks haven't been informed about. And essentially, everybody's operating in the dark, except you folks who are already in the know and have the good to go. So please take these comments into consideration and bring back meetings to Santa Rosa City Hall and do it after 5.15 or 5.20 in the evening so working class people can attend. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Um, any other public? I don't see any other hands raised. Thank you, Chair Weeks. No, not at this time. No one else is raising their hand. Thank you. So uh, with that, I will go ahead and close the public 
comment portion and bring it back. Um, and I'd, I'd like to start off uh, item five by reading our statement of purpose. Planning Commission is charged with carrying out the California planning and zoning laws in the city of Santa Rosa. Duties include implementing of plans, ordinances, and policies relating to land use matters, assisting in writing and implementing the general plan and area plans, holding public hearings and acting on proposed changes to the zoning code, zoning map, general plan, tentative subdivision maps, and undertaking special planning studies as needed. So with that, I'll move on to any committee reports um, uh, from commissioners. Nope, okay. Uh, so no committee reports, and now we'll move on to commissioner reports. Are there any report, anything um, that the commissioners would like to report out? Okay. Um, therefore, we'll go uh, to department reports. Mr. Triple. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Weeks and uh, members of the Planning Commission. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, we do have a few items on our department report today. First, the update on hybrid meetings. We continue to work diligently to prepare for that opportunity to host hybrid meetings. Uh, which would allow us to, to be both in person at city, in the city council chamber, as well as provide access via a Zoom virtual meeting. So as soon as uh, we are ready to uh, make that step forward, we'll let you know well in advance and uh, we'll invite your participation either via Zoom or at uh, city council chamber. So along those same lines, one of the factors that determines when we'll be able to move to hybrid meetings is uh, the return to campus for city staff. At present, that date is uh, anticipated to be November 1st of this year. Finally, looking at your planning commission activity for the month of October, we do have a full agenda for the October 14th meeting. So we'll look forward to seeing you on October 14th. We have um, uh, one study item and uh, several public hearings. And at this point in time, however, we do not have any of uh, meeting items for October 28th, but, but uh, we'll keep you updated on uh, that meeting. Then looking forward to November, um, if, if you've not looked, looked forward at this point in time, uh, both of the regularly scheduled public hearings in November fall on federal holidays. So um, both uh, Mike Maloney and I have reached out to Chair Weeks. We'll be coordinating with her next week uh, to review meeting items uh, that are upcoming as well as look for an opportune time to reschedule and hold a special meeting in November uh, to accommodate those um, cancellation of the regularly scheduled meetings. So stay tuned for that. And as, as soon as that meeting's completed, uh, next week we'll be reaching out to you likely for availability. Um, next, you should have received a communication from Mike Maloney uh, regarding a Joint City Council Planning Commission study session of the general plan housing element. Uh, that date is scheduled for November 16th at 2 p.m. And I did see a, a shaking of a head, so we'll verify with Mike uh, and, and reissue that communication as necessary uh, to make sure that you have ample opportunity to check your calendars and to reply with your availability. And then finally, the um, short-term rental urgency ordinance uh, that is in draft form will be uh, coming before City Council on October 12th. Uh, because it is an urgency ordinance, unlike other ordinances, it does not come before Planning Commission prior to going to City Council. If you've not had an opportunity to participate in any of the short-term rental meetings, um, I would encourage you to do so. I believe there is an upcoming uh, neighborhood meeting um, to, to receive comment about that uh, urgency ordinance. And then as if you've been reading the, the news, news over the last week or so, the government or the governor has signed uh, new bills that are related to land use. Uh, SB 9 gives homeowners additional tools to add critically needed new housing and help ease California's housing shortage. And SB 10 establishes voluntary streamlined process for cities to zone for multi-unit housing, making it easier and faster to construct housing. 
And so as is the practice when, when a new policy is established by the state, we review that and, uh, and review also our zoning code for, for required amendments to comply with state policy. And then those amendments come before you. So uh, we'll keep you posted on our review of the new policies as well as um, any study sessions that are needed or eventual reviews of zoning code amendments. Finally, to, to echo Chair Week's comments about translation this evening, we are uh, uh, grateful to the community for uh, requesting this translation service. It is very important that we're providing opportunities for community participation by all members. And, um, you know, we also thank uh, Planning Commission for the continuance of this evening's meeting item from our prior meeting so that we could prepare for translation services. I also want to, to acknowledge um, staff, uh, Mike Maloney, Michelle Montoya, um, Beatrice and Chris Dene for the work that they've done to uh, prepare for this evening's meeting. As, as was noted, it is our first uh, translated virtual meeting and, and there was a bit of a learning curve there, but I think we're looking forward to a successful meeting this evening and to being able to expand our knowledge of, of um, providing outreach to communities. Um, so with that, uh, that concludes the department report and we'll look forward to this evening's public hearings. Thank you, Chair. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Triple. When I uh, watched uh, the last, um, I think it was the Economic Development Subcommittee meeting where they talked about short-term rentals, um, they indicated that um, there would be kind of a condensed ordinance just addressing some of the issues going to the council condensed ordinance is not the right word, but just addressing some of the issues going, that would be going to council as an urgency item and that a more robust and comprehensive ordinance would be coming back later. And that, that is something we would see probably after the first of the year. Uh, that's correct, yes, yes. Thanks for those additional details. So the, the condensed version is the urgency ordinance, uh, which would allow us more time than it would, it would place some regulations and would allow us more time than to work on a comprehensive ordinance. Thank you. Uh, so with that, um, any statement of abstentions by commissioners tonight? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we don't have any consent items, which is item number eight. So item number nine is our uh, scheduled items and our public hearings. The first item is item 9.1. It's a public hearing on erudite dispensary, cannabis retail, exempt from CEQA, conditional use permit at 3059 Coffee Lane, CUP 19-056. This is an ex parte item. So um, Commissioner Carter, we'll start with you. I have visited the site and have nothing further to uh, share. Thank you. Commissioner Cisco. I visited the site and I have no new information to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Duggan. I have visited the site and have no further um, information. Thank you. Commissioner Holton. Uh, I've also visited the site and I have no further information to disclose. Thank you. Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, so this is the site and have no additional information to disclose. Thank you. And I also visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Um, so with that, I believe Ms. Murray will lead us off. Good afternoon, Chair Weeks and members of the Planning Commission. I'm going to just give me a second here. I can't talk and share my screen at the same time. <laughs> So first I want to apologize that the, my, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, I want to apologize that you don't get the standard uh, PowerPoint format. So I'm going to fumble through this with uh, my PDF. I misplaced my slides. So um, anyways, the project before you is the Erodite uh, dispensary. It's proposed at 3059 Coffee Lane. Oops. The project uh, proposes an approximately 2,500 square foot dispensary, which will also provide delivery service. 
um, they'll, they, they will sell both medical and adult use products. It requires the conditional use permit, which is before you this afternoon. It also requires some level of design review, um, the conceptual uh, front, you know, street front is on this slide. So this is a, an aerial view that was taken, I think within the last um, couple of years. Um, the, the site still has quite a bit of cleanup to do. This is a, a recent picture that I took during the site visit. There's still quite a bit of stuff on the site that would, would be removed as part of this project. So um, here's a um, kind of a neighborhood context map. Um, the properties on the east side of Coffee Lane um, are, are all residential. Um, are, yeah, they're all residential. And to the north, uh, it's, it's commercial and light industrial. And then to the east and to the south, it's more uh, commercial uses. So the general plan and zoning, the, uh, um, the, to the, you know, uh, on the east side of Coffee Lane, those uh, um, low density residential and um, RR20 up to the north, uh, directly east is low density residential with very various uh, residential zoning districts. And to the north um, and the project site, both have uh, light industry, general plan land use designation, and the site has a uh, general industrial uh, general um, zoning, sorry. Uh, the project was, uh, application was initially submitted in June of 2019. Um, later that year in October, the application was deemed complete and a couple months later, we had a neighborhood meeting. Um, on April 12th, uh, 2021, um, we were in response to staff, staff comments and issues raised, um, a revised set of plans was submitted. On August 12th, we were initially scheduled to come before the planning commission or the project was, and the planning commission granted uh, the applicant's request for a continuance to September 9th to allow some additional review of the traffic conditions. On September 9th, um, the item again was continued to September 23rd, this time due to a clerical error. And uh, the September 23rd meeting, here we are, was re-noticed again. And I'd like to point out, it was re-noticed um, uh, in compliance with the, uh, with the zoning code in terms of the mailed postcard and the um, uh, Press Democrat publication. The sign was posted about three days late. So the zoning code allows that the uh, planning commission or the review authority, in this case, the planning commission can act even with a defect in noticing. Um, there's been a lot of noticing for this project, including the, uh, the, the neighborhood meeting notice and, and of course, a couple of mail notices for, for the meeting being continued. So the original meeting and the continuance. So in terms of the California Environmental Quality Act, the, the project is exempt for a variety of reasons. It involves um, a new use as an, at an existing structure with only minor exterior and interior uh, modifications. Um, it's infill development and it's consistent with the general plan for which an in, environmental impact report was certified back in 2009. In December 2017, the council also, um, when uh, the, the comprehensive regulations for cannabis were adopted, they reviewed the, this in relation to the um, environmental impact report. And um, yeah, and it was, it, it's very similar. And the use is very similar to uses that were examined for that. So here's the proposed site plan, and I apologize. It's the, the next slide will help in terms of the floor plan, but the parking is a little bit, it was always difficult for me to see on this. So the parking is, I don't know if, yeah, if you can see my cursor, there's parking back along this uh, Northwestern property line. And then this back, this lower um, 
southwestern uh, area is currently part of the building, but they'll be opening up that wall right along here, and this will be covered parking in here. The dispensary itself is only in this area that I'm circling with my mouse, my arrow. And then there's additional parking, including an ADA spot that goes out here. So parking, the parking, um, there are 10 parking spaces provided, which is consistent with the general plan requirement. I'm sorry, the zoning requirements. So, and here's the proposed floor plan. Entry over here. And that parking I talked about was over here. So this slide shows proximity to schools. There's the closest school is North Valley School up uh, uh, to the north, um, east of the, the project site. The project site is shown by the yellow and red star. Um, the state and city require or don't allow dispensary, dispensaries within 600 feet of schools or other dispensaries. In this slide, you can see that it's it's over a thousand foot uh, feet away from the dispensary. The um, the school is a thousand feet away, uh, which is the red circle. Um, I'd also like to say, in response to a uh, commissioner inquiry, there are six six known. Um, dispensaries north of Highway 12 and east of Highway 101. Um, those, those dispensaries include, uh, let's see, Flora Terra, uh, Aloha Aina, Sonoma Patient Group, Alternatives Health Collective. Um, let me see. Uh, hum Humanity Wellness and The Hook. Uh, the closest of those those six uh, dispensaries are Flora Terra, Terra and Aloha Aina, and those are both about a half a mile away, which is significantly more than 600 feet. I'm showing the current elevation now again, so that you can see side by side the proposed elevations, which is a, a nice change, I think. As I talked about on the site plan, on the, the lower north elevation, the lower image, um, the, the building, as you can see, they're opening up that, that uh, back side so that there's covered parking back there. During staff's review, a couple of issues came up, <clears throat> on-site parking and uh, general site plan configuration in terms of safety and, and whatnot. Um, were addressed, um, the, those were addressed on those revised plans that came in in April, and then uh, trip generation uh, that triggered um, a traffic impact study, um, which has been done, and the, trif the traffic impact study concluded that um, there, there are, there's no sin significant impact anticipated based on uh, this new use. There are no other unresolved issues, or there are no, no unresolved issues. <clears throat> um, in terms of public comments, I received one email which was included in the, uh, the packet um, provided for the project, and um, I received a phone call. Um, in both cases, uh, they brought up traffic circulation in the area, which was addressed in the traffic impact study, which was, by the way, reviewed by our traffic engineering division, Rob Sprinkle specifically, and um, over-concentration of cannabis retail facilities. And as I said earlier, the closest cannabis retail facility to this site is um, half a mile away. So with that, it's recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Planning Commission, by resolution, approve a conditional use permit for erudite dispensary to operate a cannabis retail facility with delivery service at 3059 Coffee Lane. And for those of you that are calling in and can't see my, my slide right now, my name again is Susie Murray. My phone number is 707-543-4348. And I do answer my telephone and I do return my phone calls. And my email address is S-M-U-R-R-A-Y at srcity.org.
And that concludes my presentation. If the Planning Commission has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. The applicant is also available as our city staff and uh, the applicant doesn't need to make a pre or has, is not planning a presentation, but again, is available for questions. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Um, so any uh, questions for Ms. Murray before we open the public hearing on this item? Okay, seeing none. Um, so I will go ahead and open the public hearing. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. If you are listening on the Spanish channel and wish to make a public comment, turn off or leave interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called so you join the main channel to make your public comment heard and translated into English. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. Thank you, Chair Weeks. No one is raising their hand at this time. Okay. So I'll wait. One second, Chair Weeks. Looks like we just got a hand raised. Just one moment. Okay. And the caller is Michael Hilber. If when you start speaking, the timer will start. Hello, I, I want to uh, express concern about uh, what was said regarding defects in the notice for this project and, and this meeting. So I wasn't entirely clear on the details regarding that, but it's highly important that all the neighbors get proper notice and the details and the meeting and all this stuff so that they can provide their input. So I will um, ask you to um, take that into consideration and perhaps um, sus suspend a, a vote on this to the extent that um, there was inadequate public notice. That's all I will uh, conclude there. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hilberg. Uh, you, is there anyone else that you see, Mr. Maloney? Uh, no one else is raising their hands at this time. Okay. So with that, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. And um, Ms. Murray, if you could go over again the history of the public noticing. I certainly will. The, uh, when the, uh, yeah, we did a public notice for a, pub, uh, a neighborhood meeting way back in 2019, um, when the project finally went to public hearing, we went ahead and re-noticed that public hearing for the, I believe it was the August 12th. Mm, let me see if I can bring up my slides so I can see that again. Um, I believe it was for the August 12th meeting. And at that point, the item was continued to a date certain, um, which was September 9th. At the September 9th meeting, the item didn't make it onto the, the agenda due to a clerical error. So we again continue the item to, to today, to September 23rd. And for this meeting, a new notice was sent. The discrepancy is that the, the noticing that's required includes a mailed notice to property owners and occupants within 600 feet a published notice in the Press Democrat and um, a, a public hearing sign posted on site. Um, and it requires all of those 10 days in advance. The mailed notice went out on time, the publication was done in advance, 10 days in advance, and the sign was posted three days late. It was only up for seven days for this meeting. Uh, the other sign was up um, earlier. So, um, and we've, we've received one one comment again um, via phone and one via email, which was included in the correspondence. Thank you very much. Um, 
any questions of staff at this time before we, um, um, Commissioner Cisco? Uh, Pat, are you, you're muted. Um, Ms. Murray, uh, just for our education, um, I'm noticing that in the staff report, the, the, the project uh, or the zoning isn't consistent with the general plan. And typically we would be asked to rezone to get the general. And I appreciated your email, but just for our education, could you just go over that again, why we're not doing a rezoning for this project to bring it in? Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were done. I'm happy to explain that. <laughs> Um, the, the general plan land use designation for the property is uh, light industry. The implementing zoning district for light industry is light industrial. The project site, the general plan designation is light industry. The zoning is general industrial, which is not consistent with light industry. In both, both the IL and IG, light industri industrial and general industrial zoning districts, a, a major conditional use permit is required for a cannabis dispensary. So there would be no benefit to the rezone. It would no extra requirements for the project to do the rezone. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I had another point that I wanted to make. Ah, I'm just drawing a complete blank on that. So any, oh, I know. And then the findings, <laughs> required findings require that the project be consistent with the general plan. It also requires that the project be consistent with the site zoning. It does not require that the zoning and the general plan be consistent. So because there is no additional benefit to doing the rezone, it wasn't required. Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Duggan, do you have a question? Uh, yes, this is more for um, the applicant team. But I noticed in the focus traffic study, the site plan they used for the parking was different than the site plan in your slide 10. And I'm wondering if there were any implications with that because they noted that the site circulation was adequate, but noted, but using a, an older, I think, site plan. Could, could we ask the applicant to raise their hand uh, so that Mr. Maloney can promote them? Thank you. And also, if you could state your name for the record before my you name start. Is Jeff, my name is Jeff Linden, and I'm one of the applicants, of, of shareholders in the business, and the COO. So um, if I understand the question, I'll try to answer it. There's a difference in the two site plans. I think that we redid the site plan based upon setbacks, but the parking plan should be consistent from one to the other. I, I'm not sure, uh, I, I'd have to take a look at both plans because I have a set of, uh, of uh, plans on a PDF and it should be consistent with what Ms. Murray uh, put forth. So I, I'm not sure where the, the inconsistency is. I'd have to, have to figure that out. But the parking is consistent, the, the driveways are consistent, all of those should be the same. We haven't changed them. It was just in the site plan in the traffic study shows um, like four or five uh, that are parallel to the northern property boundary and not perpendicular like the ones that are in the building. Ah, uh, okay. I now, know I, that, I, there I, was the, the site. Sorry. Right. Right. Now I understand. Yeah, the, the latest one is the one that are perpendicular because we redrew them. Uh, that's what the revision that we that the city asked, staff asked for, and we went back and redrew them. So that's the, the latest one is the one with the perpendicular and not the parallel parking. And that's the inconsistency that we drew, redid this plans to fit the requirements uh, asked of us by city staff. Okay, um, any other questions of staff or the applicant? If, would somebody like to make a motion? Commissioner Cisco, can do that. Uh, go ahead and move a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa, making findings and determinations, including a conditional use permit for a cannabis retail facility with delivery service, 
providing products for adult use located at 305 Coffee Lane, file number CUP-056. And we for the reading of the text. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, so that was moved by uh, Commissioner Cisco, seconded by Vice Chair Peterson, and now we can have discussion. So, Commissioner Carter, any comments? Well, my only comments are that the uh, location and the design of the facility seem to be adequate for the use proposed, and I believe I can make all the necessary findings and will be supporting the project. Thank you. Commissioner Cisco, I'll also be uh, supporting the project. Uh, I think the improvements to uh, the outside of the building are going to be an improvement to the neighborhood. That's what we keep seeing with these projects: is updating our industrial areas and, and making them look um, much improved. So, with that, I can also make all of the findings, and we'll be in favor of the project. Thank you, Commissioner Duggan. I can also make the required findings and I'm in favor of the project. And I think it'll be a nice, um, a nice update to the site. Thank you, Commissioner Holton. I can also make all the uh, required findings for the project and also be in support of the project. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, I don't have much to add. I, I think this looks like a, a good project. I think it'll be um, a contribution in the neighborhood. I don't have any concerns about the, the notice issue. I think that was adequately addressed. And so I can make all the required findings. Thank you. Uh, I also can make all the required findings. Um, it's, pr it's a pretty straightforward proposal um, and consistent with city regulations and policies. And I think it also will be an improvement to the neighborhood. Um, so with that, uh, the resolution was moved by Commissioner Cisco and seconded by Vice Chair Peterson. Mr. Maloney, if you would call roll. Yes, thank you, Chair Weeks. Commissioner Carter. Aye. Commissioner Cisco. Aye. Commissioner Duggan. Aye. Commissioner Holton. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. And Chair Weeks? Aye. So that passes with six ayes. Um, Mr. Maloney, would you uh, like us to take a break before the next item? I think that would be nice for the interpreters. We can take a, a short break. Even just a five minute recess would be great. Okay, so if we could be back at 5.22.
Mr. Maloney, are we ready or do you need a few more minutes? Thank you, Chair Weeks. Staff is ready when you are. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, item 9.2 is a public hearing, old school cannabis. It's, it's a CEQA exempt project, conditional use permit, 100 Sebastopol Road, CUP 21-027, continued from September 9th, 2021. This is an ex parte item. So um, I know we did that last uh, meeting, but we'll do it again this meeting. So Commissioner Carter. I have visited one, the one, site. One moment, Chair Weeks. Um, okay. Kristen, can you please stop uh, sharing your presentation? Thank you. Commissioner Carter. I did visit the site and meet with an applicant representative previously, and I have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Cisco. I have visited the site. I had a very uh, short conversation with the applicant's representative today and have no new information to disclose. Thank you. Commissioner Duggan. I visited the site and had a meeting with the project applicant on site and have no new information. Commissioner Holton. Uh, I did visit the site. Uh, however, I did not have a meeting with the applicant. I have nothing for them to disclose. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. I visited the site and have no additional information to disclose. And I also visited the site and uh, had a couple of phone messages from the applicant, but we were never, or the applicant's representative, but we were not able to connect and I have nothing further to disclose. So with that, uh, Ms. Tumins, you want to lead us off? Yes, thank you, Chair Weeks and members of the Planning Commission. This is Old School Cannabis at 100 Sebastopol Road. The uh, project includes a, a variety of cannabis uses. Uh, a large portion of the existing building on site will be used for cultivation, about 17,000 square feet. The second largest portion would be the retail on-site consumption and delivery, which is about 23, uh, 2,350 square feet. And uh, there will also be distribution at 870 square feet and volatile manufacturing at 500 square feet. The retail hours that are proposed are nine to nine, seven days a week. This is the um, project location in Roseland in the south uh, west uh, quadrant of the city. Here is an aerial view of the project site. It's a former school, most recently a charter school that's uh, been vacant at the site. This is a street view of um, the project site off of uh, Sebastopol Road. Um, this, is, uh, this slide shows the project location um, in relation to the nearest um, cannabis retail dispensary. Uh, the cannabis retail dispensary is known as Phenotopia, and it was approved um, at the location at 443 Dutton Avenue. And it's outside of the 600 foot uh, radius of the site. So um, uh, because of that, there is no uh, uh, over concentration per code of um, retail dispensaries should this project get approved. This is the uh, general plan and zoning des designation for the site. Um, what's a little bit unusual about this project site is the general plan designation. There's two general plan designations. So the first third of the uh, parcel towards uh, the front, front third of the parcel um, fronting on Sebastopol Road has a medium residential general plan designation. And the building sits on the portion that is designated general industry and the entire parcel is zoned for a uh, light industrial. Um, because the building and all the uses will be um, in the general industry, general plan designation, and because the zoning is light industry, this use um, would be allowed um, with a conditional use permit. So here's the existing site plan. There's a um, small uh, industrial or retail building in the front. Um, there's a shared parking lot and um, the school, the former school has an L-shaped um, 
configuration, and it has frontage on Sebastopol and Timothy Road. There's an existing chain link fence surrounding the property as well. Um, this is the proposed site plan. It would include a new uh, security fence and swing gates. It would be see-through wrought iron along Sebastopol Road, and the applicant, applicant proposes a block wall along Timothy Road with some vine plantings to uh, curb um, graffiti. Um, something to note, uh, the, the red circle there is the on-site consumption um, lounge. It's located towards the front of the building off to uh, the east. Um, the applicant is, um, so the entire parcel will be fenced, but there will also be an internal um, fence enclosure. Um, and this will aid in um, uh, the safe um, transfer of goods to and from the building. Um, it'll allow for safe deliveries in and out. And the retail portion is still accessible um, towards the front by the public. So it helps to segregate internal um, um, internal employee uses and public customer uses. So as far as parking, the site is overparked. There are 28 spaces required for all the different cannabis uses proposed, and there are 60 spaces available. So there's more than enough parking on the site. Here's a floor plan of um, the building, how it would be utilized for the different uses. As you can see, all the, the um, back of house, you know, uh, cultivation, distribution, manufacturing would be towards the back and the retail and outdoor lounge is towards the front. Um, here is the proposed um, elevation um, that, that the applicant is proposing. It would include, um, we can see that in the dark, the dark brown structure would be the, um, the consumption lounge. And one thing to note about the consumption lounge, because of the city's smoking ordinance that applies to not just tobacco, but all types of smoking, the, um, the outdoor, um, the on-site consumption would be limited to anything that is not smoking related. So no smoking or vaping. And here's an entry perspective of um, the front of the building. Here is existing and proposed, um, uh, existing photo of the project site along Sebastopol Road and the proposed um, rendering of what it would look like with uh, that chain link fence removed and replaced with the wrought iron fence and the various um, improvements that would occur in the parking lot. Um, and, and you can, you can see there were some portable buildings. I believe those were removed and um, are no longer on the site. This is the view from Timothy. So as I mentioned before, um, rather than chain link, um, the applicant is proposing a solid block wall fence and there would be a gate at that um, Timothy, uh, Timothy Road driveway. So this project is exempt from CEQA for a variety of reasons. It involves a change of use, which will re require minor exterior modifications to the structure and site. The project um, involves minor modifications to the existing facility with no expansion of use. Um, it's an inf infill development project, and it's also consistent with the general plan and the Rosen Area Sebastopol Road specific plan. So staff did receive um, some correspondence regarding this project. Um, some were received uh, prior to the um, earlier September meeting. Um, since then, we've received two voice messages. One was in Spanish and was translated for me. It was a very short message that stated that uh, simply they just didn't want a dispensary in the neighborhood, it didn't um, elaborate as to the reasons or um, didn't speak further. Um, the other was, uh, the other voicemail was in English and um, it was from a former alum from um, when that pro project site was a school and was disappointed in the proposed use and was concerned with um, negative elements that would be introduced to the neighborhood. Um, late correspondence was provided to the Planning Commission as well. Um, concerns include the proximity of the cannabis dispensary to residences and families and the library um, and to the other retail dispensary at Dutton and Sebastopol.
because the project um, uh, appears to meet all the findings, they've provided a odor mitigation plan and a traffic memo, um, and there's um, plenty of parking for the site, um, and, and the applicant is providing security and lighting. The Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Planning Commission approve a conditional use permit to allow cannabis retail um, and delivery, cultivation, volatile manufacturing, and distribution uses um, located at 100 Sebastopol Road. And here's my contact information if anyone has any questions that they would like to direct to me. Uh, staff is available for comments and questions and the applicant also has a PowerPoint presentation that they would like to share. Thank you. Um, any questions of staff before we hear from the um, applicant? Uh, Chair Weeks, could mm -hmm. we take a, a brief pause to reconnect with the translators? Uh, yes. Um, right. Five minutes? Um, that, that should be plenty. Yes, okay. thank you. So we'll be back at 5.38.
Thank you, Chair Weeks. Staff is ready to do it. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so I believe we were at the point um, that if, are there any questions of Ms. Tumians before we hear from the applicant? Okay, seeing none, then um, if the applicant could raise their hand so Mr. Maloney can promote them. And um, if you could, uh, before you start, if you could please state your name for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Nayeli Rivera. Thank you. And do you have a PowerPoint presentation? I do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Tumans. Okay, go, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners and staff. Thank you for your time today and for allowing me to speak about our proposed project located at 100 Sebastopol Road. My name is Nayeli Rivera and I am one of the owners of Old School. We are seeking approval to operate a cannabis business which will do cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and retail. Next slide, please. Myself and Sadie Hunter are partners in this business. I've known Sadie for many years. She was born and raised in Northern California, like myself. She is the general manager of Canadel, a cannabis dispensary near Anadel Park in Santa Rosa. She has been in cannabis for a long time and is a strong advocate for cannabis, patient rights, and policy reform. Next slide, please. A little bit about me. I was born and raised right here in Sonoma County. My father and mother immigrated to Sonoma County in the mid 1970s. I am a first generation Mexican American woman. My father has worked in the Latino community for over 30 years. He works in immigration services and has done a lot of outreach in Roseland area as well as Sonoma County as a whole. At an early age, he would bring me to work and I began assisting him with immigration services. I have seen Roseland develop over the years and I support the culture and the community. The early work I did in Roseland with my father created a passion in me to be of service to my community. After graduating high school, I continued to work as an interpreter. I worked with the Sonoma County Office of Education as well as the deaf and hard of hearing community. My family also owns a farm labor contracting company out of Napa. I began working with my family in the late 2000s. This sparked my passion for business and entrepreneurial pursuits. Next slide, please. As you can tell, Old School is a proud woman-owned and led business. It is of utmost importance for us to use our platform, not only to uplift women in the cannabis industry, but women in all businesses. I feel very honored and grateful to be given this opportunity to form this business and connect back with my roots, as well as work in an industry I am extremely passionate about. Next slide, please. Old School will be a vertically integrated company, meaning it will follow the life cycle of the plant to the shelf. We plan to have indoor growing facilities as well as, as, well as manufacturing facilities to make different products. Our distribution will service other dispensaries as well as our own retail store on site. We are creating a state-of-the-art indoor growing facility and we will grow the best cannabis yet. It was very important to me that my company have complete control over the entire process so that we make the very best medicine for our patients and consumers. The quality we intend to produce will rival other companies and put Roseland on the map as one of the best cultivators in the state. I wanna be able to tell people and the public exactly how their products were made. I feel this transparency gives consumers more confidence and trust in the products they use. 
I think it's important that our community sees this operation as not just a business, but an opportunity to educate and bring more knowledge and support to the cannabis industry as a whole, while highlighting the positive effects it can have on the local economy. Next slide, please. As I mentioned about myself earlier, volunteering in the community are close to my heart. When Sadie and I made the decision to move forward with this project, we knew we both wanted our new business venture to do good and elicit change for the betterment of our community. We created the community plan in order to set our intentions from the beginning. This is something both Sadie and I have been very passionate about. We would love to attract and hire locally and tap into the diverse talent pool in the Roseland community and the greater Santa Rosa. Once our business is operational and cash flow positive, we plan to not only make monetary donations, but encourage volunteering of our staff. Some of the programs, programs we've reached out to are Social Advocates for Youth, The Living Room, Vitalent, and Becoming Independent, which is right down the road from us. Next slide, please. In the last couple of weeks, we were able to meet some of our neighbors and discuss this project, as well as hosting a community meeting at the facility to give our neighbors a chance to walk through and ask questions. As I mentioned on the last slide, it is important that our neighbors have direct access to us so that we may answer any questions or concerns. I have also received a letter from the community wishing there was more space for cultural events and educational functions. We are hopeful that we will be able to host a number of events and we are open to creating a safe space for community engagement. We are entertaining a lot of community ideas for artwork and murals inside and outside of the dispensary. And we would love to work with local artists and embody the culture of Roseland. We want to hear ideas and feedback, especially on how we can potentially use our resources to better serve the community. Next slide, please. Our business operation was designed to comply with both local and state standards. Odor mitigation equipment, such as carbon filters, will be implemented throughout the entire facility. State-of-the-art hydroponic systems that are designed to recycle water so that maximum water cons conservation is used. State-of-the-art technology, such as LED lighting, will minimize our carbon footprint. Pending approval from your commission, we will pursue the following licenses for each of the cannabis use types of our, of our, at our facility. Again, the licenses would be for retail, cultivation, distribution, and manufacturing. Next slide, please. I truly believe our project will benefit the community in the greater Santa Rosa area. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime for any questions or concerns. My information is listed both on this slide deck and at the proposed site. Again, thank you for this opportunity to speak and share our business with the Planning Commission and the Santa Rosa community. Before I close, I'd like to quickly address any Spanish speaking members of the community that are here with us today. Hola, mi nombre es Nayeli Rivera. Mi familia emigró de México a los Estados Unidos en los 70s. Mi papá ha trabajado con la comunidad latina del condado de Sonoma por 30 años, ayudando a nuestra comunidad a legalizarse. Por parte de su trabajo, tuve la oportunidad de trabajar de traductora para inmigración, al igual a, a otros programas sociales. Mi familia entera ha apoyado a la comunidad latina del condado de Sonoma por más de 40 años. El propósito de nuestro proyecto es brindar a la comunidad un espacio donde podamos compartir y aprender juntos para mejor apoyar a nuestra comunidad. Queremos crecer con la comunidad y ofrecer programas comunitarios, al igual que promover el arte de nuestra juventud de Roseland y servir como defensores a la juventud. Nuestro deseo es quebrar el estigma asociado con cannabis en la comunidad latina. A través de la educación, podemos extender los beneficios médicos de cannabis a nuestra gente 
para que puedan tomar ventaja de esos beneficios. Como dueña, me gustaría extenderle la invitación a que compartan con nosotros sus sugerencias y sus preocupaciones. Me gustaría trabajar con ustedes para conocer más acerca de las necesidades de la comunidad y así apoyar a los programas locales que contribuyen al bienestar de la comunidad, la comunidad de Roseland. Tenemos la intención de crear una relación con la comunidad que se mantenga por muchos años más. Muchas gracias por su tiempo y agradezco de corazón su apoyo de antemano. Again, thank you to the commissioners for allowing us to speak and for allowing us to present our project. Thank you, Ms. Rivera. Um, any questions of the, of the applicant before we go to the public hearing? Okay, seeing no questions at this time. Um, so I would like to go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker will have three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. If you are listening on the Spanish channel and wishing to make a public comment, turn off or leave interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called. So you join the main channel to make your public comment heard and translated into English. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Um, we also wanted to give a uh, one-time reminder if um, anyone's speaking in Spanish, if they can please only speak about three to four sentences and pause, giving the commenters to, or the um, interpreter's time to interpret what you said and to allow for accurate interpretation. So again, if you can say about three to four sentences, then pause, and then you can continue. Additionally, it's going to be, we're going to be playing a three minute timer twice. So you'll get six minutes to allow time for the interpretation. So you'll see the countdown go from three to zero, three minutes to zero, and then it, we will restart the timer in three because we do not have a six minute time. And with that, our first speaker with their hand raised is April Reza. Hello, uh, Planning Commission. And I just wanna greet everyone who's also listening um, as a fellow member of your community. I just wanted to come here and kind of just speak my piece to this issue. Um, we gathered past weekend with several youth from the community who raised lots of concerns. And so I just wanted to raise these concerns publicly here in this space. Uh, one of the main concerns was what is the need for a cannabis dispensary in the Roseland area? Currently within the five mile radius, there are already 14 operating dispensaries. Within that same five mile radius, there are eight schools, operating schools. Um, and in the past, um, the city has done reports like the Roseland final uh, report that's presented as a part of this project. And nowhere in those reports is there stated a need for a cannabis dispensary in this area. But there are stated needs for community spaces, for after school programs, for child care, for um, culturally relevant um, opportunities for the community. In terms of businesses in that report, they report uh, desiring small locally owned businesses. And I just feel that it's important to acknowledge what the community has already advocated for in the past, what they've continually advocated for. And to acknowledge the fact that these demands have not been met, these, these asks, these desires have not been met by the planning commission um, and so I'd like to ask, what is it going to take to have these things met for the community who has been studied and has been and has offered their reporting back? This uh, 
cannabis dispensary and my respect to the women who are presenting it, my respect for their experiences, for their stories, you know, I want to honor that. But this uh, business in itself is not something that's desired by the Roseland community at large. Um, y en español, quiero también decir que si la planta lo que es marihuana, si se reconoce en la comunidad como una planta que es medicinal. La comunidad ya sabe eso. Lo que no le gusta es el hecho de que esa planta se está explotando. Y igual va a haber una explotación de la población aquí en Roseland. It's not okay, you know, to, to capitalize on the community in this way. And I think that's all I want to say today. But thank you so much for having um, a second meeting so that the Spanish speaking community of Roseland can have an opportunity to speak. Thank you, excuse me, thank you. Chair Weeks, um, because that, was, that one was in English, I just wanted to state that it's gonna be a six minutes for when we're receiving translation. So for that one, will be just three minutes, which means I can call on the next, which is Ana Salgado. You now have permission to speak. Buenas tardes. Sí, adelante. Mi nombre es Ana Salgado. Y um, quiero, um, pues, más que nada reconocer el, el ánimo que tiene la, la persona que está aplicando para este permiso. Este, y lo maravilloso de su presentación. Eh, la razón que yo estoy aquí es porque desde el 90 yo llegué a vivir en esa área y he sido testigo de muchas cosas que pasan en, en, en el área. Y cuando ella estaba explicando el desarrollo de, de este plan que ella tiene, yo me estaba imaginando un lugar atractivo de actividades para los jóvenes y para las familias, como un centro comunitario. Um, a lo largo de los años, como lo he dicho, he visto cómo familias se han destruido por el uso de esta hierba. Esos lugares que ella menciona, donde su familia ha ayudado, esos lugares han sido refugio de muchas familias quebradas por esta hierba, por el uso de esta hierba. La comunidad ahí es latina, en su mayoría latinos. Los latinos traemos ya cargando una ola de, 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 de malos recuerdos porque por esta hierba se han matado familias completas. Incluso ahora hay una gran emigración de familias completas de los estados donde más se siembra esta hierba. No queremos traer eso a Rusland, ya suficientes problemas tiene. Suficientes problemas tiene para con esto. Entiendo que nos debemos de educar, pero no creo que es el tiempo ahorita para lucrar y capitalizar a nuestra juventud y seguir ganando dinero a costas del sufrimiento de nuestras familias latinas. Felicidades, señorita, por toda su presentación, pero creo que su negocio no pertenece a esta área. Puede llevárselo a otro lado y crear trabajos en otro lado y dejar en paz el área de Rosland, que bastante tiene que ofrecerle a nuestra juventud y a nuestras familias latinas y a las demás. Muchas gracias por escucharme. And one, one moment, Chair Weeks, because um, we, we were not hearing a translator at that moment. Um, Charles, if, are you able to, yes. are you planning on translating after th their three minutes or in between? Uh, I can go ahead and do it after, it looks like. Oh, okay, we weren't, we weren't sure, so we were. Uh, preferably, we were preferably we would pause, but it's okay. I can do it this way this time. Okay. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Anna Salgado. Um, I want to recognize the energy and uh, charisma of the person applying for this permit um, and recognize the marvelous presentation. 
Um, but the reason that I'm here in this meeting is uh, that I've been here since the 90s. I've lived in this area and I've uh, been witness to many things that have happened in the area. Uh, when she explained the development plan that she has, um, you know, I first imagined an attractive area with activities for kids and family members, like a community center. Over the years, I have seen families destroyed due to the use of this herb. Um, the, those locations, uh, like a community center, have been refuge for many families and um, many families in this area are Latinos and we already carry many bad memories. Um, we've even, even entire families have been killed due to this plant. Uh, and now there's even an emigration from states that cultivate this herb openly. And uh, we don't want to bring this plant to Roseland. Um, I understand it's important to educate ourselves on it, but I don't think that this plant has a place here. Um, so I just wanted to say congratulations, Miss, on your presentation. Um, but I believe that the business does not belong here. Um, I think it would be better if you were to take it to another location somewhere else and please leave Roseland alone. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, the next speaker we have is uh, spelled out J-O-B-E-L-L. -L. I'm gonna go ahead and give you permission to speak. And if you can please state your name for the record. And again, um, if you are gonna be speaking in Spanish, anybody on this call, if you could do three or four sentences and then give a long enough pause for the interpreter to jump in and they will interpret it um, at that point. If you have any questions, please let us know when it's your turn to speak. Again, Joe Bell, you now have permissions to speak. And the timer will start with you. Hi, my name is Jolie and I'm a member of the community. I just wanted to um, get on this call and say thank you for the wonderful presentation. I also, I am in support of this plan. Um, you know, yes, I'm in support. It will build up economic wealth within the Roseland community, which I think is extremely important. And because it is run by members of the community and not somebody coming from the outside, this is the heart of where they live. And so they actually care about what happens within the community, especially since one of the owners is a Latina woman from um, Northern California. Also, um, I think it would be a disservice to not allow this dispensary and cultivation to happen here because it's such a large space. And I just imagine what other companies could come in and take this space and not care about the com community, not be involved in the community, not had years of experience um, with volunteering within the community. And, you know, we've seen time and time again, big corporations come in and take over large portions of small areas that really we need local people to be running these businesses, hiring people from the community and giving back to the community in this way. Um, also, you know, dispensaries that are run by the community will help, you know, I know a lot of people may be concerned about, you know, crime rising and things like this because it is a legal, well-run facility. It will actually diminish crime in the area, I believe, because, um, you know, if you have a place that is safe, legal and open to, procure the products that you're already seeking. That means that illegal sales will be taken off the streets. Um, there will be education and quality products provided to the people who need this medicine. And that is helpful for the community. And in the response to, you know, not wanting a dispensary in Roseland, um, to my understanding, there is already a dispensary in Roseland. I'm not sure who owns it who, or who runs it, but I would be happy to see this go into action so that these community members can uplift and build Roseland more and make it a place and a destination for the Latino or the Latinx community and, um, you know, really build up the economic wealth there. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Julie. Uh, 
All right, thank you for your patience, everyone. Next on the list is Josh Flint Toscano. And again, um, if you are speaking in Spanish, anyone, if you can please speak for three to four sentences and then give a break for the translator to be able to jump in and translate for the commission. Thank you very much. Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Jocelyn Toscano Contreras Aoris. Um, I am a representative of Mecha de SRJC and I'm going to read a statement from us. Uh, we from Mecha de SRJC oppose the approval of the permit of old school cannabis at 100 Sebastopol Road in Santa Rosa. The permit was filed for retail with delivery, on-site consumption, cultivation, distribution, and manufacturing of uh, cannabis products. We are concerned for the community and the impact of opening this cannabis dispensary in the Rosen community, especially at a building that was uh, formerly a safe space to educate mm -hmm. minors. Our question is why is the permit being filed uh, for that building specifically when, uh, when there are quite a few dispensaries in Santa Rosa already, anywhere from a five to 15 minute drive from that location as was presented, um, as well as more schools such as an elementary school and a middle school five and seven minutes from the location. Uh, where there are many children who walk home and pass by that specific location um, in the center of a predominantly Hispanic community setting. As well as the two sides of the building, there are residential areas as was presented. Some of the negative side effects that we have thought about that can happen there are increased policing, especially in an on-site mm -hmm. with the on-site consumption, which can lead, um, sorry about that, uh, which can lead to an increase in policing, especially with on-site consumption, which can make a lot of Hispanic undocumented folks feel um, unsafe in their own community. And in, another one is an increase in secondhand purchasing in the area, um, mm -hmm. which happens quite often at dispensaries. Um, someone who is of legal age and able to purchase and distributing to other people who cannot or minors, as well as cannabis products manufacturing and processing, which can happen that, as I mentioned, can happen on site. Um, if the permit is approved, often involves chemical extractions through mm -hmm. which solvents are used, uh, which risks risk explosion. These concerns are, um, we are questioning the outreach in the community, especially since many youth organizing groups and community members did not know about this petition until in the recent few weeks. Mm -hmm. We proposed the building uh, to be used for what it was intended to originally, to educate the youth, for example, Rosen Public Library, a community center or a recreational center for the youths. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Hans Herb. And though I am stating everyone's names from what they are listed, if everyone could remember to state their name for the record, it would be appreciated. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Hans Herb, and I'm here on behalf of the Citizen Cleanup Coalition. The Citizen Cleanup Coalition has been working in the Roseland since the mid-1990s to deal primarily with toxic problems. And over the years, we've focused on that particular end of Sebastopol Road as an area where we wanted to get additional attention to addressing potential toxic matters. And we were able to convince the uh, US EPA to provide a very large grant, hundreds of thousands of dollars, to be used to help uh, address toxic conditions in the neighborhood. And they are right now across the street from where this proponent proposes their facility uh, in the process of putting together a detailed study so that the property can be sold for homes. And the owners of the properties that are involved in that area have been working for the last six years to find a home builder that will build homes in that area. And it's challenging. It's challenging because there's toxic problems in brownfields and they, not everyone wants to deal with the brownfield. So we have had many, many people locally and from LA and all over look at this property. Uh, and the EPA has been very supportive of our, our work out there. Um, but it's extremely challenging to get what we want to get done when additional impediments are put in our way. I, I listen to the applicant and they seem like really great people and they seem like they have a really great business model. And, you know, if they weren't building across from the project that we're trying to clean up, I would love the heck out of them. But right now we're just perceiving him from an environmental perspective, from our goal, which is cleaning up the environment and addressing toxics in the Roseland and something, you know, I've been, spending more than 30 years of my life doing. Um, it's just disappointing 
uh, because a lot of things never get done in the Rosen because some unintended consequence of something. If you look at the Rosen Village Shopping Center and some of these other things, people, well-intended people, somehow end up creating additional problems. And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just pointing out to you, this is going to be a difficulty that we're going to have as environmentalists from an environmental perspective, building homes in Sonoma County because of this project is just going to be perceived as, as an impediment. And so I just wanted to make you aware of that concern and thank you for holding a public hearing. Thank you very much. Next, we have a Thomas Kime. Oh, hello. Um, uh, yeah, really, I want to thank the uh, commission for providing this uh, public forum and uh, you know, I've had concerns about this since I heard about it just a few weeks ago, and they mirror those of the, kind of the prevalent opinions of the community. I, I live nearby where this, uh, you know, uh, 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 manufacturing, processing, and distribution of marijuana uh, products is proposed. And uh, my concern is for that, that uh, you know, I was talking to somebody. Um, he has uh, is a member of the, uh, what it is, is a Marijuana Anonymous um, public information committee, and they've been discussing this and the fact that there's, we'd like to make resources available to people who are smoking a lot of pot and wish they weren't, who would like to stop smoking pot. And it could even be looked at as pandemic, particularly in our area, you might have heard the term Sonoma aroma or even experience that ambiance. It's, it's very prevalent here. So, um, what we would like to see is, uh, he mentioned that in casinos, um, they have, a, they'll have a, 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 a sign or, or notice uh, pointing people to a Gamblers Anonymous or something like that. But uh, I, I, I hope that maybe the Planning Commission is in a position to put this as a caveat or a, a, a requirement or a condition that there be um, displayed, uh, uh, prominently displayed, uh, some sort of resource for people perhaps a 12-step program. There's Narcotics Anonymous, which I understand deals with the problem of addiction regardless of the substance. I think there's Marijuana Anonymous meetings as well, and there are perhaps dry out facilities or whatever. But to make these resources available to people, and, and I don't question the goodwill of the, of the ladies that are the face of this enterprise, that are the, the, uh, the owners of this enterprise toward the community, but uh, I think that there, you know, something in the way of a mandate and enforcement that would, uh, uh, as the casinos have, give people a chance to either, you know, avail themselves of, of the possibility of free, freeing themselves from a marijuana addiction that might be derailing their, their studies, their careers, their social life, their family life, to give them that option, to accept it or ignore it, you know, just to put that out there for them. And it's a very lavish facility. It's going to require, they're going to have to sell a lot of dope, I mean, to put it plainly to make this thing work. They're going to have to, to market a lot of pots. So um, we will uh, hope for their cooperation in this matter. And at some level of city government, hopefully at the planning commission level, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to uh, to reach people and give them an, 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 uh, an option to be free from this uh, pandemic of, of marijuana addiction that we, we see all around us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Kime. Next, we have uh, Janice, if you can state your full name for the record. Um, actually, let me let you know, Janice, if you'd like, you can um, give us a call. Um, the phone access number is down there, but it appears right now that um, you're using an older version of Zoom, and it's not giving me the ability to promote you and give you permission to speak. So if you can please call that number at 888-475-4499 and use meeting ID 988-0836-6416. And you'll be able to raise your hand um, via that phone number using star nine. If not, you can uh, hop off this meeting, do an update to your um, Zoom and hop back in and re-raise your hand. We do have quite a few people with their hands raised and we would like to be able to hear from you, but at this time, I do not have the ability to promote you to be able to speak. With that being said, I am gonna move on to the next speaker, which is Ricardo Suarez. 
Ini buat apa? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone on the Planning Commission. My name is Ricardo Suarez, a senior at the new Rosen University Prep. I joined this call as a RUP METCHA representative. I want to state that I am against the plan proposed for this agenda item. It is disappointing to see that a placement he called a second home will be used to make profit off of my community without a direct positive impact. On this webinar, I am also accompanied by multiple individuals from the new RUP and those who too are against uh, opposed to this agenda item. We believe this location could be better utilized by creating a place that will allow community growth and engagement. There are currently eight K through 12 schools within a five mile radius of the proposed dispensary location. I believe that my community would take much, would take much more advantage of a communal center that encourages cultural or artistic activities. Students, parents, and community members desire a place that encourages strength, unity, and knowledge. I have a friend whose name is Maria Valverde, who lives in the blue area covered on the slide presented, slides presented earlier, to which she states she was never not notified of this proposal. Um, and while having conversations with my peers at RUP, it is evident to me that we want to voice that as a dense community of Latinos, Hispanos, Chicanos, we feel targeted and would like to note that the Rosen community has a low income neighborhood that does not desire a dispensary. And after some research of our own and questioning the knowledge of my community, it is obvious that individuals were not aware of the proposal. And so questions, some of my questions become, why, uh, what was done to give public notice? I asked this from concern because I live close by and was never actually made aware of this. Aside from this, what other proposals have been considered for this property? Have we, the community, been asked what we think most would most benefit us? I suggest creating a center for culture and art. This would be something that students, parents, and community members would be happy to engage in. To end this public comment, I want to state that there is no need for this dispensary and are opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Marcella. Marcella, we're actually getting the same Zoom prompt that we are unable to promote you to panelists due to the version of Zoom that you have. It looks like it appears to be an older version. So to be able to give your comment, you're welcome to give us a call. Again, that phone um, access number is on the screen right now um, on the slide, but I will read it out for anybody on the phone. It is 888-475-4499 using meeting ID 988. 08366416. Again, that phone access number is on the screen. You can call there or you can leave the leave the meeting and do an update to your Zoom. But yes, if anybody else um, would like to at this point update their Zoom or give a phone call in if you're not sure if you have the latest version of Zoom, it will be able to be helpful for us. But again, we're gonna keep moving down the list. So at this time, Anne Marie Janella, you are next. If you can please state your full name for the record. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay, great. My name is Anne Marie Janella, and I'm speaking in support of Old School Cannabis's proposal for growing, manufacturing, and providing a retail distribution facility in the formerly Roseland Charter School. Having two women lead in the cannabis industry by creating a cannabis center as the one proposed is a win for Sonoma County. Having one of the women be a Mexican-American who grew up in the Sonoma County is a fine example and opportunity for Latina leadership in our county. These women are demonstrating entrepreneurial foresight and leadership for our community. Old School Cannabis not only has the opportunity to be a source of employment, but also a place of education and a cultural center for the uses and overall value of cannabis. It looks and sounds like careful thought has gone into this project and isn't something that would cause problems or harm. Unfortunately, there is a stigma around cannabis that is basically old school and outdated. It is a medicine that when used properly creates more good than harm. 
Are there any reports of increased criminal activity around facilities such as these? Or are, or are our concerns based on unfounded fears? We are a county monopolized by its wine industry, which in my opinion is more harmful to people and the environment, and yet is not treated with the same stigma. There are currently 62,000 acres of grapes and 425 wineries in Sonoma County. And currently there are only 142 cannabis dispensaries in Sonoma County. I'm unable to find the number of acres currently being grown for cannabis in Sonoma County, but I know that the goal is to have 65,000 acres. If we're going to support the growing of cannabis in this county, then we also need to allow the businesses that accompany them. Let's lead by showing that we can have thriving, industrial, industrious, and responsible cannabis operations owned by women and supporting the Latinx community while also leading to change the stigma around cannabis. I have been a resident of Sonoma County for over 40 years. I have taught in Sonoma County for over 20 years as a teacher of many students. I have watched the landscape change from dairy and eggs to vineyards and wine. It's time we balance out the monopoly of wine and wineries with more cannabis and more local women, women owned businesses. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. you one moment, Chair Weeks. Next, we have a Cliff Wingham. Hello? Hello, my Hi, name Cliff. is Cliff Wingham. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Cliff Wingham. I'm a property owner and resident of uh, Roseland area. I live less than 400 feet away from uh, this facility. This facility is not surrounded by light industrial, though the property directly behind it going down Timothy between Timothy and the railroad tracks down to Barham is uh, general industrial. The rest of the property surrounding it is residential, including the property directly north, which is the new Roberts district uh, indicated through the downtown station area specific plan. And it has a, a zoning for a FAR for residential of 6.0 which means around 700 units will be built on the 310 acres directly north. All the property uh, uh, tenants now are all on legal non-conforming use permits and are on a month-to-month -month, uh, rental basis. They're prepared to move out when the properties go into contract with a major developer, which we are negotiating with now. The property directly east is Village Station Housing. They have a lot of kids. They have a playground with swings and slides. You can see it from the street. The property directly uh, west is uh, the on-site landscaping. They are also on a legal non-conforming use permit. The property was built as a school and when we develop housing surrounding it, you know, nature of around a thousand houses, considering how much is being built, uh, we're gonna need elementary school, daycare, preschool. I love the idea of even a library or a combination of library and uh, daycare. That would serve the community and uh, the cannabis. I'm from San Francisco and I see them up there getting people to buy up for them going inside. So we want 700 units across the street from a place that they can just go out there and say, hey, I'll give you $20, go buy me two joints and you can keep the change. And that will happen, I guarantee it. Uh, this is not in the best interest of the future development plans of Santa Rosa or the future or current communities surrounding this site. Uh, consideration needs to be given to other uses they're more beneficial to the community than a huge cannabis complex. It doesn't make social sense to my mind anyway. 
and it will delay or prevent or cancel a development projects which are under underway. Uh, I appreciate your consideration and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have an Ann S. Hello. Um, with 40 plus marijuana stores in Sonoma County and more coming, how many do we need? And more importantly, how many do we want? This is a huge neighborhood incompatibility issue. And I can't believe that you, the commissioners, are actually even considering a consumption lounge on site. Even though smoking of marijuana products will be prohibited, ingestible marijuana products contain high levels of THC. Customers will be leaving the facility and driving impaired. The Roseland neighborhood is a high density one with many pedestrians, including children and the elderly, who will be put at risk. Finally, I want to answer back to the applicant's claim that, quote, cannabis dispensaries are medical facilities. I am an RN. They are not. They do not sell medicine, as it is commonly known. Nor do they employ trained healthcare professionals. Their clientele are not patients. They are merely customers. It is very loose, and may I say very disingenuous, use of the language to promote a drug that has been thoroughly that has not been thoroughly tested nor approved by the FDA. And finally, specifically, what oversight of regulations and follow-up will the city of Santa Rosa employ if this mega marijuana factory is approved? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Jessica Rodriguez. Hi there, my name is Jessica. Um, I live just a few minutes around the block from the operation unit that's being proposed. And I'm just here to echo the concerns of the many community members that have spoken for various reasons. Um, this location does not seem suitable for a cannabis dispensary or cultivation unit. From a community and planning standpoint, the campus itself could be utilized for a space that is dedicated to the community and as it already provides the infrastructure needed to host community-centered events, which have been a demand of various community groups. Um, as your senior planner, Christine A. Tumin stated, this is a unique project because it will be on the larger side for cannabis facility facilities operating within city limits, um, along with the lounge that would permit on-site use of cannabis, which, which is not normal at all. So I don't understand why this location would be deemed suitable when it's been proven as so incompatible by so many community members. Um, as it's been stated several times, the community of Roseland did not ask for this dispensary to be added to the neighborhood. Some of the concerns I want to express include the presence of police, the location of the current homeless encampments, and the increased traffic on Sebastopol Road. Has the Planning Commission considered the implications of having um, this type of dispensary closely located to a neighborhood that is highly policed. Also, the intersection of um, Sebastopol and Timothy is known for being a hotspot for encampments. So whenever the city puts out an order to do a Thank you. Next, we have a Veronica Paramillo. Um, good afternoon. My name is Veronica Hedemio. I'm a current student at Rosen University Prep. I'm also the current co-chair of Much for RUP. Talking to my former members, such as Ricardo, we decided that the, the building, the location where Rosen University Prep is not a wonderful location to build a dispensary since the previous, it was a place for high school to teach minorities and Latinx community. And we believe that it should continue helping the community, especially the younger generation, because 
most of the population's younger generation, and the younger generation is the future generation, such as we could have a center for culture, because I believe that more students and more children should be more connected with their culture and culture from other different parts of the world. In addition, many former students of mine had, did not know who lived right next to the houses there, did not know about this, and were not informed until I told them personally from being informed. I was just informed this week. I hope that whoever's planning it to be able to inform those who live there to be more informed and to know what the benefits are and the complications on where they live. I feel like it should continue being a place for minorities to teach them and to be helpful for the younger population and to serve as something that the community wants because what I've heard from the community, no one really asked for a dispensary. They asked for more help for schools, daycare, services, resources. And I wish it could possibly be a food bank. What I've noticed is that mostly food banks around here are very far away. And I know a lot of people enjoy volunteering there. And I feel like it's more better for people to volunteer at a food bank than volunteer at a dispensary. Um, that all, that's all it concludes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Jessica and Mo, and if you can state your full names for the record. Yeah, hi, um, it's just Jessica Holcomb here. Um, I am in agreement with the facility that is being built on 100 Sebastopol Road. Um, I currently um, live off Sebastopol Road as well on the other side. Um, I would just like to speak on the fact that um, the other side of Sebastopol Road um, has a really bad homeless encampment on that side, and it creates tons of toxic waste on that end of Sebastopol Road. Um, and also the other side of Highway 12, I mean, my house is in between both homeless encampments that have been there. And I can honestly say that I would feel safer walking my two-year-old along the iron gate that they would be building versus in front of my own house where there are many empty businesses below all these houses. And it's unfortunate um, that these people would be opposing new businesses blossoming in this area because um, I really hope that it could clean up the area. I also um, don't see an issue with it if it's proposed um, a safe space to cultivate. Um, I also believe that there are lower crime rates that can happen with that. Um, and I also fully support a woman-owned business. Um, so that's just my two cents, and I'd just like to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Michael Hilbert. Uh, hello, yeah, my name is Michael Hilbert, and... Uh, I'd like to go on record objecting to this. It's another example of how Roseland is getting victimized by opportunists. People see Roseland as a low hanging fruit and uh, things get allowed here that uh, wouldn't be allowed in the better neighborhoods of Santa Rosa. This place will be an eyesore. Uh, the, the renderings I see make it look like a prison yard with the iron six foot tall fence along the front and a concrete wall along the side. And, um, you know, the proximity to other retail cannabis establishments, there's one right there uh, on the, near the corner of uh, Dutton and Sebastopol Road uh, inside where the Jack in the Box is. So that suggests to me that the whole ordinance should be scrapped. What we're looking at is uh, you know, anything that's uh, 600 feet or more is okay. And that's just nonsense. You know, to suggest that uh, wheat purveyor every 600 feet is okay. 
And, uh, you know, that makes me concerned about, um, you know, the people who are making the decisions with the, with respect to these ordinances. And uh, I'd like to see you uh, planning commissioners, uh, you know, indicate some awareness that, you know, this is just not appropriate to say that all you need to have is six feet between them and you just have one after another. Yeah, that's not at all appropriate. And uh, I've read a lot of the online comments on this, and you know, I want you to recognize that there's a tremendous amount of opposition, although not everybody can afford to uh, attend these meetings. And one of the comments was concerning that, uh, you know, it seemed to imply that there should be criminal background checks associated with people who are proposing these projects. And I'd be inclined to agree that, you know, people connected with uh, the dispensaries uh, should have a, you know, background checks associated with everyone applying for the permit and they should be made public. It's also been noted that Roseland has a, a gross overabundance of uh, liquor stores and they're getting stinking rich selling the cheap vodka to people. And when they're, they're passed out, it's the tax paying suckers who pick up the tab. You know, the fire department to come out and respond to a passed out individual who's just been in the process of making the liquor store on the rich. And I want to make the observation that I've seen plenty of people, you know, simultaneously drinking the cheap vodka and smoking weed at the same time. So um, I think your fire department has to respond to that. Uh, we're being made uh, suckers out of. That's it. Thank you. One moment, Chair. Mr. Maloney, um, do the interpreters need a break at the moment? Uh, they have not indicated that. We're just having a technical issue with the uh, timer. Thank you. Next, we have a Rocio Mondragon Reyes. Yes, hello. Um, I speak tonight as a private citizen who lives in the Roseland District. I was born and raised here, and I'm a former Roseland University prep student. Um, I just want to bring up the concern as has been echoed multiple times about uh, the increased policing that could come with this. It surprises me that given that Ms. Rivera shared that she used to advocate for immigrants and uh, specifically in the immigration field, that she does not um, reason with the fact that while maybe criminalization rates may go down for U.S. citizens or people do not who do not have a uh, historically stigmatized relationship with the police, that might not be the case for undocumented immigrants. And Roseland is an area that holds a large population of undocumented immigrants. And I really think that these people who are some of the most vulnerable and historically lack the most voice, including perhaps tonight, um, are not being considered and are not being put at the forefront. So I really want that to be considered because while there might be a stigma um, around cannabis, there's also this very real fear that comes with being a everyday um, undocumented immigrant simply living their um, decent life, earning a living decently, and having increased policing in the area because of something that citizens would be gaining out of um, would not be beneficial to the undocumented population who also needs to be considered. So I want that to be considered. Um, in other respects, I also just am not of the belief that this is the way to um, foster the community as someone who was born and raised here. And I don't think that being Latina or being a woman is enough merit to come in and bring in a business just because without considering the people that we're gonna impact negatively. While I have the utmost respect for the business development, I do not think that this population has been considered um, in a thorough manner. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next, we have a Celine Lopez Zamudio. Celine, I just wanted to let you know that we're getting that same error code for uh, so it states that you're using an older version of Zoom. So you're welcome to leave this meeting and update your Zoom. Come back in, raise your hand. We'd like to hear from you. Otherwise, you can definitely give us a call at the phone number on the screen that we've provided multiple times, but it is on the screen there. Um, if you'd like to give us a call in using that meeting ID. With that being said, I'm going to move on to Jesus Perez. Hello, my name is Jesus Perez, and I am also a current student at the new Roslyn University of Prep, and I am also here on behalf of my Metro group. <clears throat> and I wanted to start it off by saying that I have nothing but respect for the women here who are what's it called, trying to start a business and make an honest living. I truly respect that. I, however, do not respect their intentions here at all. They claim that they have great intentions by bringing what's it called, whatchamacallit, this business here for the economics. And while I do agree to the, an extent that was a call, we clearly could use a bit more economic backbone. I don't agree that this is the correct message for that. To begin with, I it was a call. That place that they're trying to build it was a place that was a call that was made with the intention of helping us Latino and Latina students or Latinx students, sorry, was a call, educate us so we could strive for something better. And the fact that they want to make it into a cannabis dispensary when there are already plenty of other dispensaries around the area. And not only that, but this was a call. I have myself have seen was a call how students, kids really have gotten easily access to marijuana and use it for not the correct purposes. And I quite frankly don't think this was a call something we need. <sighs> kids was a call will easily get access to this. It does not take much to have a man, woman, or anyone really go up to the business who is legally say, I'll give you 20 bucks. Here, go buy me this. Unless someone else's book said, keep the change. They claim they want to help our community, but I really only think that they're what's it called, going to bring more problems with it. On top of that, I'm extremely disappointed by the name choice, old school. It's almost like they wanted to joke around that that used to be an old place. It may or may not have been their attention, but I quite frankly don't appreciate a gesture like that. It's the equivalent of spit going to our current school and spitting on the legacy it built. As my fellow Metro members have said, we can use this place as a center for culture and art, as a place for education. Well, Uzuko, I fully support these women being able to Uzuko, bring their businesses I think it was a quote that the best thing they can do for this community is to please leave. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have an Amelia Bowler. And Amelia, I'm also getting that same uh, prompt saying that you have an older version of Zoom. So you're welcome to leave the meeting and update your Zoom and come back in. We'd like to hear from you or you can give us a call at that phone number listed below on the slide, the 888-475-4499 with the meeting ID 988-0836-6416. With that being said, next on the list is Nicole Schupman. Hello, good evening. Um, thank you so much, commissioners, for giving me a chance to speak tonight, and I appreciate you giving of your time to hear this. Um, Honestly, I am a resident of West Sonoma County since 1976. I have children that I raise in the same community that I was raised in. Um, and in hearing all of these comments tonight, I am just more solid in my support of this project, mainly because it is so apparent how much education we need surrounding cannabis. Um, you know, there's j just some of the comments tonight, it is, honestly a little bit shocking that such education is lacking. And when you see the presentation tonight 
me as a business owner here in West Sonoma County, a female Latin business owner, I just 100% support this because I feel like these women are the women that are going to come forward and are going to educate our community on really the benefits of medical marijuana, on policy reform surrounding cannabis, which quite frankly, our state has legalized. So we need to kind of catch up in our education of our community. And these women seem to, from everything I heard tonight, want to embrace the community and to embrace the culture and to include them, whether it's, you know, with events or giving of their property, which as a business owner, what I would say is that's extremely generous. And I want to support other women who are here to do that for our community. So uh, that's that's pretty much my take on that. And I appreciate your time. And, you know, I look forward to visiting this dispensary, hopefully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have a Marcella. And if you can please state your full name for the record. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Marcela. Uh, good evening. Uh, y, My name is Marcela. Sí. Y este, yo en la parte que no estoy de acuerdo, que lo pongan, porque yo vivo exactamente en, el, en los apartamentos que están aquí, en la Timothy. Y la verdad, este, tenemos um, bastante problema con personas que no tienen hogar, que están fumando su marihuana. Y este, de alguna manera, es algo que nos preocupa, hablando al vecindario, porque con este negocio que quieren poner, más personas van a venir. Nosotros, los del vecindario, hemos estado notando que a partir de que se hizo público este anuncio de este, esta tienda que se va a poner, este negocio, están entrando personas extrañas, carros extraños, eh, a, este, a una velocidad que no deberían. Y otra cosa que nos preocupa es también porque ese es un vecindario de familias donde hay muchos niños pequeños. De hecho, yo tengo tres hijos que anteriormente o, o salen a jugar y ya con esta situación así, yo tengo, especialmente yo tengo la preocupación qué personas van a venir a entrar aquí, porque yo vivo exactamente en, en frente de, de donde se quiere, es donde se está proponiendo este negocio. Yo apoyo a la señorita o la señora, porque es una hispana, porque es mujer, apoyo que es una mujer emprendedora, pero este negocio aquí no lo necesitamos, no lo queremos, y he estado escuchando que dicen que necesitamos educarnos, pues entonces primero vengan y edúquenos y después vengan a proponer su negocio. Una vez educados, quizás nuestra mentalidad, entre comillas, cambia y puede, puede, darse, puede darse esto. Pero en realidad no estoy de acuerdo junto con muchos más vecinos que hemos estado hablando acerca de esta situación. Gracias. I do not agree uh, with this proposal because I live exactly in front at the apartments there on Timothy. Um, honestly, we have a lot of um, issues with people who do not have homes around the area smoking marijuana. And it is something that worries us in the neighborhood. This, because of this business, more people will come. Um, even though the business proposal was publicly announced, there are a strange people we've noticed, strange cars going at speeds that they shouldn't be going. And we are very worried because we are families with kids, lots of little kids. I have three kids, as a matter of fact. If my kids go out to play, I'll be especially worried um, when these other unknown people begin to arrive. I live exactly in front of the proposed location. And I heard this, heard the the person asking for the permit and that she is Hispanic, that she is a woman, and I'm glad that she's motivated and self-driven, but we do not want or need this business. I heard her say that we should that we should receive education about it, but 
Well, then I propose that first um, they come out and educate us and then propose the business. Um, after we receive this education, we might quote unquote change our opinion, um, but I do not agree with the business being there. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for the interpretation. Next, we have Ross R. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Yes, yeah, so we can hear you, Ross. Once you start speaking, the timer will start. Hi. Uh, for the record, my name is Ross Raphael. Um, I'm calling because I am in support of this business. Um, there was many good points made, and I would like to mention the fact that some of the points about bringing crime or like essentially a kid could walk up to somebody and ask them to buy them cannabis products, right? Uh, we all know from our youth that there's many, many other ways to get whatever you want, and many are easier in reality. Uh, I get the fact that people think it's going to bring crime, but it's actually going to reduce it. It's going to keep people from staying in that area or possibly in, in reality, it's going to also reduce the fact that everybody sells weed black market, if you want to call it that, but it, it will actually help reduce it. Uh, yes, people make the point of multiple dispensaries, but if it were me and I smoked cannabis, I would totally be willing to drive another five minutes if I had to. So it doesn't quite make a difference in the neighborhood. All the dispensaries around nowadays and grow operations are very safe, actually. Uh, there's really not much crime. You never see it on the news. But yeah, that's about all I have to say about it. Us. Next, we have a Michelle Saxton. Uh, Michelle, if you can unmute yourself, and then once you start speaking, we'll start the time. Oh, okay. Um, Michelle Saxton here. I am in support of this project. I hear that the community is concerned and that there's still a stigma and fear of cannabis. Cannabis is legal and these are real businesses with professionals with revenue and taxes that will support the community. Dispensaries are not just stores that sell dope. They offer natural plant alternatives to opiates as well as tinctures, topicals, and products that offer relief for chronic, chronic pain relief and sleep aid. That's it. Thank you, Michelle. Next, we have a Raquel. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Raquel, and I just wanted to come on here and make a comment. Um, I also live with walking distance of the proposed location, and neither myself or my neighbors were given notice, um, which is pretty strange considering that we live right around the corner from this um, proposed dispensary. But anyways, I wanted to say that I'm here to stand with the young people and the students um, that have named their opposition to this project. I, as a local resident, um, believe that this is not what the community wants or needs. Um, a majority of the Rosen community is made up of young people. And so I think that their needs are the ones that should be prioritized. Their desire should be prioritized. And I don't think we're doing a really good job of listening to that right now. So I just want to point back to the many um, great comments and points that they've all made throughout the night here. Um, also, I just wanted to say that for the white men that keep commenting, I want to make it clear that we do not need education around cannabis. That is your assumption. That's not what the community is asking for. So please respect that. Um, I think it would be great to see a community center or a cultural center or just a place, you know, where young people and um, families and little children can go and just um, 
you know, find time to like connect with each other, to relax, to um, learn, you know, about their cultures and to connect across cultures as well. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say I'm opposed to this. I don't think it's a good idea. It's not what we need. We have enough dispensaries as it is. Um, so, you know, please, my respects to the presenter, but um, this is not what we need. And also, um, I just wanted to point out that, you know, I know the presenter was a woman and a woman of color, but skin folk are not kin folk. Just because you're Latino doesn't mean you have the best interests of the Latino people in this area. So I just wanted to remind everybody about that. Um, I will yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have an M. Payne. If you can please state your name for the record. Here we go. Hi, my name is Mark, and I am for this project. Can you hear me? I see people shaking their head, but I'm not hearing the voice. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Okay, great. Yes, yeah, so I'm here for the project, and a, a few things. I'm a 63 year old man. I've been in the uh, community for 60 years. And as far as the cannabis location, I can't seem to think of a better location for the simple fact that it is confined to its own property versus all these other dispensaries that are either in a strip mall or uh, exposed on the street. I think to be able to come into a facility, feel absolutely safe and be in an environment outside where children aren't allowed, people that aren't 18 or older aren't allowed to go into, which if I'm walking in the facility, uh, say for instance, off of um, a Dutton in that facility, you know what, there's stores, there's um, uh, laundromats and all these people come in to use that and their children from, from zero until however old you are to come past it. And this is a facility that you're going there for a specific reason, not for a reason because or walking by and it's there and you pop in. Second of all, I think as far as security and as far as having a more uh, uh, police presence, presence in any of these communities, I would love to have it in my community, more police presence and be feel safer. And to take a facility that I know has been on the market for you know over a year, I know there was a, a talk and I think there's a letter out there that was presented that uh, the school was there, the school left. After the school, there was a, a, a thought of having a library there. You know, some people, you have to put this money in these, these, this money and these opportunities together, but nothing has ever happened. Now you're taking a building that needs renovation, that needs to be cleaned up, and, and you have a good client or a good person coming into that neighborhood and going to bring revenue into it. I think it's a win-win for everybody. You know what? I, I sympathize with the thought of the police, you know, for the undocumented uh, immigrants that are here but maybe it's time that you know more presence will help people and they'll get more comfortable with that um i, I look forward for you and the staff you know going full force and approving this project and hopefully that uh, you know you have to think of the community and the people that own the properties and they're trying to help the area and i know that the property owner that has it finally leased needs that revenue and I think the whole thing is a win-win for, for the community. There is education and marijuana is not a stigma of people being stoned and screwed up all the time. Thank you. Next we have an Odalis R. If you can state your name for the record. Uh, Adelis, I'm actually getting that prompt, states that you have an older version of Zoom. As I stated previously, you can leave the Zoom room and update your Zoom app, or feel free to call the phone number on the screen with the meeting ID 988-0836-6416. Again, it's 888-475-4499. It's toll free, 988-0836-6416. With that being said, next we have a Ricky. If you can state your full name for the record. Hi, sorry, I was checking about a food. Um, my name is Ricky. I am a 
Latino, um, identify as uh, he, him. Um, I'm going to speak as briefly as I can, just so I can translate it myself uh, into Spanish so everyone can understand. Um, I uh, would like to preface everything I have to say that with uh, this, I guess. Um, a lot of the fears and confusion and sort of um, stigma around uh, cannabis or marijuana, as, it know, as it's known in Mexico or in the you know, Spanish-speaking communities, um, come from, you know, propaganda that was instilled most directly in the United States, like during a time where black people still had no rights, brown people still had no rights. Um, and I think we forget that really easily. Um, and, you know, I am also first generation American. My, my parents are Mexican and I remember growing up and, you know, hearing about weed and thinking that it was the worst thing in the world. And as I got older, I, you know, in my teens, I became rebellious like many of us do. And, you know, I experimented and I realized that a lot of the undiagnosed mental issues that I had were alleviated by this thing. And I sort of felt like, huh, okay, well, everyone talks so poorly about it. Anyways, I realized I only have a minute and a half left already. Um, I, I, I kind of just, I guess I want to say that this is a business at the end of the day to stop a business owner from opening a business because of a lack of help from your local government or because of, you know, fears that come from a lack of education, I think is a bit ignorant. Um, it's hard enough to open a business, especially right now. I think it's one that, that takes in so much tax money that supposedly goes back into communities. I think we can put a little more effort into maybe advocating for that instead of opposing a business, we could start moving towards, you know, instilling other programs that don't necessarily have to negate someone else's project. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's my, that's really what I have to say. I guess I'll use the last 30 seconds to speak in Spanish to the people that, uh, don't speak English. Um, a todos, a todos los que hablan español, no, no más les quiero decir que los, los oigo. Yo entiendo sus, sus, uh, miedos y confusiones, pero entienden que la marihuana la venden por todos lados. La gente que va a fumar marihuana la va a fumar de todos modos. Tener un negocio donde es, uh, hay, hay más cuidado sobre eso, yo creo que es un beneficio para la comunidad. Muchas gracias. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next, we have a phone caller. It's 6027, or 0278 is the last four digits. I'm going to go ahead and give you a permission to speak from a phone. You just need to press star six, and you'll be able to speak. No, um, I mean, we know that you are probably not able to see the timer on the screen. So when you have about 15 seconds left, I will interrupt you. Let you know that. Okay, great. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. And the timer will start now. Okay, great. Wonderful. All right. So my name is Janice Siebert, and I am the current president of the Roseland School District Board of Trustees. And I speak as a representative of the board to say that the Roseland School Board stands for our kids and against this 23,000 square foot industrial cannabis project. Please do not keep telling us that we need to educate ourselves about the benefits of this kind of um product. We're we're constantly, constantly fighting a battle to keep drugs away from our students. And our strong voice against the old school cannabis LLC is a statement to our kids and our stakeholders that we consider this project as having a negative impact on Roseland. And we're not just talking about a dispensary. We are talking about a 17,000 square foot grow. Um, the scope of this project is the biggest, if not the, uh, it's one of the biggest operation in the city. It's a huge industrial process right in a neighborhood, as people have stated, and with with a, an area which is scheduled for high density housing, the Santa Rosa Station development. So obviously, we're talking about also on site consumption, which is not allowed anywhere else in Santa Rosa. 
And even though people won't be smoking it, they will be ingesting. They're going to be allowing people to consume medicinal and recreational drugs on the site, which means there will be impaired people traveling in this neighborhood. Again, this is not allowed anywhere else in Santa Rosa. 17,000 people uh, square feet of scro uh, grow. The smell will envelop the entire area for months at a time. I know they say they will comply with all regulations regarding odors, but that does not mean there will be no smell. Those regulations simply define how much the government finds acceptable. If this is not true, please let the cannabis people clearly and publicly state we guarantee there will be no smell. 870 square feet of volatile manufacturing means explosive materials related to cannabis product manufacturing. Again, right across the street from existing homes and future developments. And then we have the, um, and I also want to talk about the added police. We have several comments about the triggering of um, undocumented people. And I just want to say that it is not only undocumented people of color that are triggered by a, a high level of um, law enforcement. Janice, just, just so you know, so, you, have about, you have about 10 more seconds. Okay. All right. So there we go. That that's actually just one that I wanted to say. We consider this a negative project, having a negative impact on Roseland, not just a dispensary. It's a huge, huge project. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have a uh, Sylvia Langen. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello. My yes, we can hear you. Hello. My name is Sylvia Langan, and I taught at the old warehouse for 12 years. I am really disappointed that the commissioner is even considering giving us a space for the cannabis dispensary when our community has so many needs. We need, we have, I mean, that space could be better used for a community center. A, a school, a library, a daycare. Uh, so there is so many wonderful things that you can put in that space and that we really need and we want. Uh, so I heard that um, the person proposing this um, business, she embraced the culture and it is giving the community. So if you embrace the culture, give the community what we need and what we want, uh, not profit from the community. My hope is that the commissioner centers give the community of Rosaline what they need. And you hear the youth, they are asking for educational spaces. And the argument that um, people are saying is educating, educating uh, the people about cannabis. That is not a problem. The, we are educated about that. What we need is the, the, the problem is that we have other needs. We have other needs. We need the spaces for education. We need the spaces for the community center. So uh, that is the problem. Please don't change the world saying that we are ignorant and we don't know about cannabis. We, are, we don't have any problem with cannabis. The problem is that we have other needs that need to be addressed first. And there has been multiple times that the community has been asking for these places, um, daycares, uh, community center, space for the library, uh, preschool, and we haven't been here. So we need to hear the, what we really need first and then go into something else. So that is the problem, that we, you haven't heard our needs. And also, they haven't asked the people around, the neighbors, they all want preschools, they care, they, they need that educational space. And nobody is asking them, and nobody is listening. And there is no uh, confusions about this. It's what we need. So please, that's what we need. Thank you, Thank you Sylvia. Thank you, Ann. Uh, Mr. Maloney, um, I'd like to take about a five minute break right now. Sounds good. We'll put that slide up. Okay, so we will be back at about 7.13. 714, 713.
weeks. I'm just waiting for all the commissioners to get on. There we go. Next, we have a caller with the last four digits of 4308. We're going to go ahead and give you permission to speak. And you will just need to press star six to unmute yourself. And the timer will start when muted. Okay. Again, caller 4308, we've given you permission to speak, but yep, there you go. You are now unmuted. Um, okay. So good afternoon to everyone. I want to start by greeting everyone here, as well as the planning committee and all the um, people here. I am a junior at the high school of, of the university. Um, pardon me. I'm a junior at the high school of Rosen University Prep, as well as a member of the club of the club Mecha at my school. And I personally think that building a cannabis location within the Roseland district area is not a good look considering that the location held was an educational place and is being it being Rosen University Prep High School as well as holding the students from Rosen Collegiate Prep, which it holds so much value to not only our community as well as our students, our children and adults and the younger population in this community who have dedicated so much of their so much years of their lives to teaching students at their location. It is such a disappointment to know that a project like this is being proposed in our neighborhood. It puts the city of Santa Rosa and the Roseland area that holds many youth a really bad look. The name of the project, um, Old School Cannabis, um, I think is looked at as an insult considering that the site held was um, primarily a high school, um, an educating, an educational program, I mean school. And alternatively, I think the site could be used for the building of a food bank, a cultural center, daycare, a resource center, and so many other needs that our community needs and other needs that have been mentioned throughout the public comments. The location's use could vary, but as a location that used to be for educational purposes and uses, this location could be used for many more other community and or locally accessible and available centers. As a community, I do not think we need another cannabis dispensary, especially in our area of Roseland where we hold so many youth and younger generations. Thank you. Could you please state your name? I'm sorry, could you, before you hang up, could you please state your name for the record? Uh, my name is Celine. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Weeks. You beat me to it. Oh, next, sorry. We have, <laughs> next, we have a Janice Siebert. I believe she already spoke. You are correct. Hello? Yeah, looks like Odellis is back. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Odalis Rojas. I am a member of Mecha de SRJC. And I just really want to amplify the voices of my fellow Mechistas and community members. Um, the youth, and for the most part, the Roseland community does not want this dispensary as they are voicing today. Also, I'm honestly tired of non-Latinx people telling our community how to feel about cannabis, especially when our community has been historically criminalized by this. This is not about education. This is a very valid concern. And I hope this is, in, this is taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. One moment, Chair Weeks. Anyone that calls in, we change their phone number so that it's not visible to the public. So one moment, I gotta adjust a few numbers. With that, the next one with their hand raised is a phone caller with the last four digits of 1611. We have given you permission to speak. If you can press star six to unmute yourselves and the timer will start when you start speaking. Uh, 
Again, caller with the last four digits of 1611. We've given you permission to speak, but you need to unmute yourself first by pressing star, then six. Star six will unmute you, and the timer will start when you. Hello, my name is Amelia, and I'm from Windsor High School here to support RUP Mecha. And I just want to say that it is so disrespectful to even consider building a dispensary on top of Roseland School. Out of all the buildings decided to uplift the community, a uh, dispensary is chosen. A community center, a low, low income apartment, or a food bank or a library, there's so many options for actually uplifting the community, but a dispensary is chosen. Dispensary, this dispensary will be so harmful on the community because it's, because it's literally a dispensary. Like the wrong people are gonna go into that community and plus it's gonna drive out families that have been living there already because nobody, Nobody with a family wants to live near a dispensary, especially when they have children walking to school and they have to be around that. And I feel like even though the owners might have good intent or seem to have a good intent, it's about impact. How is this gonna impact the community? Because like, would this, would this be built in a white neighborhood, in a nice white neighborhood? Probably not. Or like the owner, the owner already has another dispensary why does she need another one? It's very confusing to me because it feels like a land grab when you're trying to capitalize off the community. And also, I think that I think that with the impact of policing in already such a um, community that's uncomfortable with the police, it's going to be dangerous because they're going to be even more scared. And I think another concern I have is why did we just find out about this so? So um, recent because we only knew for like, I think maybe four days and it feels like it's being under wraps. I want to know why because we don't need another dispensary. It's just harmful. And I think it's very disrespectful to even consider it because there's other options. And it's just very disrespectful. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Next, we have a Corinne. Hi, my name is Corinne Robertson, and I just wanted to call in and um, express my support for this project. Um, cannabis has been legalized, and I don't think it'd be fair to this applicant to deny the permit simply because location could be used for something else that would benefit the community. I understand that there is a need for more programs in the community, but I'm not aware of any additional proposed uses specifically at this location. There are pl plenty of other properties in Roseland that could be used as a community center or a another organization that benefits the youth in the community. We don't have any facilities like this in Sonoma County. I personally don't always know where my medicine comes from, even after legalization of cannabis and with more dispensaries continuously opening in the area. I think this facility would benefit me and people I know. I'm in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a the, the title of the name is Concern Residents. So, if you are residents, so if you can please um, state your name for the record. Yes, my name is Eva. And I, uh, um, thank you for the opportunity to give the public uh, a chance to speak on this matter. And it is very concerning being someone that works heavily in the community and looking for a public space for the library. This was one of their first options. And so there's very limited space in Roseland as it is. And the spaces we do have, as someone's talked about the toxins and the pollutions and the pollutants that we have in this area, it's very difficult to find space of this magnitude to bring the headquarters to Roseland. That was the proposed idea when they was actually looking at that site. And so to have it become something that would not allow families to participate in is very concerning. And so the public library in the past have provided healthy nutrition option classes and space for free um, workouts and free um, Zumba and so forth. So that is the public 
civic building that the public has been asking for for over 20, 30 years. And to have something come into the in the facility of um, cannabis, and I'm not against it because it helps a lot of people, but what the what the public have been asking for for so many years is not being provided by the when it was in the county, now currently in the city of Santa Rosa, and we have another facility down the street. And in the capacity of this, the library is right down the street, and students and parents and families walk up and to and fro. I pass through there every day. And the, the, the homelessness and the crime that is going on in the area, the tagging, the shootings that we recently had, the people that is coming in, they don't even live in Rosen, but here it is, they're trying to bring a business and kudos for them for trying to bring a, a fantastic business. But for somebody that is out here advocating for the things that our students need and the things that our family need, this is a slap in the face. And so kudos to them. There's other properties. There's one around the corner that's a little smaller in size. They can they they can check out. But this is what the public wants, and this is what the public need. So please, please, could we consider this permit? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Jay Ortega. If you can state your first name for the record. Hi. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes good, afternoon. We can. good afternoon. My name is Jimmy Ortega. Uh, I am um, a teacher in Sonoma County. Uh, I want to express um, concern about this project. Um, it's definitely very concerning given the fact of all the events that have occurred in Roseland in the past. Um, basically, um, I, as a citizen who lives in the Roseland area, I oppose it. Um, just, you know, I'm warning you, um, I know my people of Roseland, I know uh, that um, this is going to create a lot of issues and a lot of people are extremely upset with this issue. And um, it's very concerning with the fact that all the, you know, violence and uh, not violence, but all the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, all the chaos and problems that it could potentially create. Uh, I feel like we need to solve other issues like the homeless issue first in Roseland. Roseland has been the armpit of Sonoma County for many years. Um, they don't, the city doesn't really care about Sonoma County. Uh, I'm for the project, but not in Roseland. Um, I suggest doing the project in Rincon Valley and go open up in the Rincon Valley area and go consult with the local neighbors there. I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to have um, this uh a dispensary or cannabis place out there as well, or I'm pretty sure Bennett Valley would love to as well, or um, I'm pretty sure that uh, up in the Mayakama area would love to. Um, also, I do want to express um, I'm a little um, disappointed with the owners of this uh, or the people who want to open up this cannabis dispensary. They claim themselves that they are Latino or Latinx people. Um, and they advocate um, for the community. Just for the reference, um, please don't call yourself Latino or Latinx people and play the Latino card when most of them perhaps don't even speak Spanish or have ever set foot in a Spanish-speaking country. That's like a slap in the face. So don't play the Latino card to your convenience. So uh, that is it, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item before we close the public hearing? Um, Chair Weeks, I would like to remind all the callers that um, a few people I recommend call in if they just need to press star nine to raise their hand and that's will indicate that you would like to speak. With that, um, thank you. The caller with the last four digits of 1632 just raise their hand. And caller, you'll just need to press star six in order to speak. The timer will start when you do. If you can't see the timer, I will let you know when you have 15 seconds left. But at this time, we need to press star six in order to speak. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me this evening. My name is Katie. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me, but I'm also very proud of these women uh, to come forward um, with strength and endurance. Um, it's such a hard hurdle to come over just to 
indoor like cannabis um, loopholes and uh, hoops you have to jump through. However, I do believe, um, I am in support of this. I believe there's much um, tax revenue that will be committed to this community. I also believe that there's, um, you know, this in this updated facility, having this beautiful facility being built, it will uplift the community and perhaps even maybe influence some of the entrepreneurs in the local community to do something for themselves. Um, I have heard a lot of um, comments being made about wanting more for the community, and I, I definitely support that as well. Um, I hope maybe this will be a bridge or a, um, a way for other uh, community members to see that things can be done. Um, you know, it's very difficult to get any kind of cannabis license alone, um, and then these women coming together to do it. Uh, is just phenomenal. Um, and I hope that the community kind of sees that as something to kind of, to consider. Um, you know, there is an idea of this, these Latino women, they are Latina, I know this, um, I, and I believe in these women, they will bring culture to this community. I believe by having it here, um, that it will kind of be out in the open. It will normalize um, some of the stigma around it. A lot of it is outdated at this point. Um, I believe that this outdated point of view uh, will eventually be overrun by this next generation of believers and people that push forward new entrepreneurial ideas. And, um, you know, this medicine is being um, regulated, highly, highly regulated. I don't see a lot of um, or any kind of um, destruction going on around the area except, um, uh, yeah, I do believe that by bringing it there, I think it will normalize it. Kids will, um, I think, being out in the open, kids will be able to um, see it and see for themselves uh, exactly what it, uh, you know, it brings, um, and they can create their own opinions about it. Um, uh, I believe that, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm in full support of this. I'm so just so proud of uh, what this what they're going to be doing for this community, and I really hope you guys see see through this. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Manny Morales with their hand raised. Okay. Once you start speaking, the timer will start. Yes, say, thank yes. you. I want to start off by thanking uh, the Planning Commission for allowing the time and space to speak about this topic, uh, for also making it accessible for the Spanish speaking community, uh, having postponed it. Uh, to make sure that you had interpreters present um, to encompass and, and capture um, and also inform the community uh, that is being uh, focused uh, for this proposed uh, business. Um, I have been working in the Rosen uh, area um, for the last six years. Much of my work is still rooted in, in the Rosen area. And I want to commend all the youth that came and spoke. Um, also to to the adults in the room who came in supported the the young people and the interest of, of the young people and the community at large i also want to commend their effort um to voice their their and express their concerns um i have personally i have no um no doubt that this business uh will thrive um but the idea is not to have it in rosen not in that location. This is a location that was at one point designated as a learning center for young people. And even though it sits vacant now, um, the demands have been made. It's not just, it hasn't just been a thought, um, going back to a comment that was made earlier, the idea of having a community center, a multicultural center, a public library, uh, a daycare, or maintaining it a, a, a school campus, is not just a thought, it's been a demand in our community and those demands have not been met. Um, looking over some of the documents in the proposal, um, in the disclosure form, the applicants are already claiming that location as their address. And to this point, I haven't found any information as to who owns the, the property. Um, there's also uh, some folks that are named on the on the proposal who live outside of our community. So there's definitely outside interest coming in to capitalize in our community. There's been little done to inform our community. The outreach efforts that have been made have been um, minimal in terms of the community that's been outreached to. 
the youth took this information, went back to their homes, spoke to their parents, asked them if, if they had been informed of this proposal, and they found out that little has been done to inform them, if anything at all. In most cases, none. So um, the due diligence haven't been done. The um, What they gathered in, in community outreach does not reflect the entire need of, of the community of Roseland. And it's not, uh, much of this is not rooted in fear, but more in the necessity to provide something that is needed in the community that is not uh, a cannabis dispensary at this specific location. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a Maria Valverde Cervantes. Maria, I just want to let you know, I did get the indication that um, your Zoom is an older version, so I'm not able to promote you. Um, like I stated previously, you're welcome to call the number on the screen, 888-475-4499, and input that meeting ID, 988-0836-6416. Or you can update your Zoom, and we'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, I also wanted to indicate to the chair that we do have one hand raised at this time by April Reza. April already spoke, and unfortunately, each member of the public is only allotted three minutes, and they're only allowed to speak once on this item. So, April, we're not going to be able to call on you at this time. Chair, would you like to see if anybody, um, if that caller that I was unable to promote, if they're able to get on now, or would you like to proceed with uh, yes, uh, we'll wait just a minute or so uh, to see if they were able to call back in or the call in. Sounds uh, good. And, oh, looks like there we have another speaker. Okay. Maria, we're going to go ahead and allow you to speak at this time. Please state your full name for the record. And Maria, you'll have to unmute yourself uh, for us in order to hear you. Once you do, the timer will start. Uh, can you guys hear me? <clears throat> yes, we can. Okay. Hello, my name is Maria Valverde, and I am a senior at the new REP and part of Metro. I would like to say that I am opposed to this proposition, and I am really disappointed how we, or most of Latinos and are against this proposition, are being referred to as uneducated and ignorant. When many of us have first-hand experience on the effects of cannabis, but this is not the topic. The problem is location, and it feels like we are being targeted once again by people who are looking to make profit off my people, and especially in a low-income area where this will be located. You say you are for the people, then show it in different ways. You say we need to be educated, then educate us. Put the funds you are going to use for the center and donate them to the schools who need them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, Chair Weeks, no one else is raising their hand. Okay. So uh, with that, I will go ahead and uh, close the public hearing on this item and bring it back to the commission. So I'm going to start off um, with a few questions that I heard, um, if that's all right with the rest of the commission. So um, some of them are for, um, actually most of them I believe are for staff. So um, the question around uh, the outreach to the community um, and then the fact that the community, a number of the community members said that they didn't know about this. Can you, uh, Ms. Tumians, again, talk about how the community gets notified when an item like this comes forward. Yes, so this uh, specific project, uh, a notice of application was mailed to everyone, occupants and absentee property owners within 600 feet of the project site. Uh, prior to the planning commission hearing, a notice was mailed again um, to the same uh, occupants and uh, absentee property owners within 600 feet. Uh, signs were required to be posted on each street frontage, so one on Sebastopol Road and one on Timothy Road, and uh, as well as a ad in the Press Democrat. 
So those are required um, for uh, public hearings. Um, just to note that uh, between the last planning commission and today's tonight's planning commission, one of the signs was torn down on Timothy Road um, by an unknown, unknown person. Um, but because this item was um, continued to a uh, date certain, we didn't require the applicant to replace the sign on Timothy Road. But there was still a sign posted on Sebastopol Road, which is the more prominent street frontage. Thank you. Um, and do you know, um, this is probably a better question for the applicant that, actually I'll wait and ask the applicant this question. Um, can you talk about um, regulations and how if um, there's odor, for example, what would happen? So the city's cannabis ordinance states that there should be no detectable odor um, at all. Um, outside of the cannabis facility. Um, part of the submittal requirements is that the applicant submit a um, odor control plan that's been uh, certified by an engineer and that has been provided in the attachments. Um, typically applicants will use um, a carbon filtration system to filter out any potential odors from um, the various cannabis uses. So not just the retail portion, but cultivation um, and manufacturing and all the cannabis uses that are um, present in the building. That's required of all cannabis um, businesses. And if uh, neighbors smelled something, what is their recourse? Who, who do they contact? So first, um, uh, first uh, recourse would be to contact code enforcement and code enforcement would investigate the issue and um, take any corrective action if necessary. Um, I'd also ask if the applicant would be willing to um, post a on-site contact for people to, to contact the operator directly if, if there are any issues uh, in regards to odor or any other um, potential nuisance issues. Thank you. Um... Then the other question I had um, was around on-site consumption. Um, on-site consumption is allowed. Um, can you talk about, um, I know there's been one other dispensary that has on-site consumption allowed. Um, can you just talk a little bit about on-site consumption? Uh, yes. So. Um, the the code does permit on-site consumption with the major conditional use permit, and there are specific requirements. So first of all, um, unique to the city of Santa Rosa, we have a um, smoking ordinance that restricts smoking, um, sm smoking any substances um, indoors. Um, in addition, we have that odor, <laughs> the odor control issue. So um, those, those two combined um, restrict uh, any type of smoking of a cannabis or, or vaping of cannabis um, on the premises. Um, the specific requirements are that um, uh, the applicant has to describe the operational plan and um, their security protocols and how um, the consumption would um, comply with requirements set forth in um, our cannabis uh, ordinance as well as state law. Um, employ employees who are, um, they're required to post signs on the consumption area, the entrance of the cannabis retail facility that clearly and legibly um, <clears throat> notify those um, entering that smoking and vaping of cannabis is prohibited on site or in the vicinity of the site, except as permitted in accordance with our smoking uh, chapter. So in addition to cannabis, um, the city cannabis zoning regulations, this applicant will be required to obtain state licensing. And there is a state Bureau of Cannabis, um, uh, cannabis Affairs that um, issues licenses and um, monitors um, 
um, applicants' um, adherence to their um, specific requirements, similar to um, the ABC the Alcohol um, Bureau that uh, manages alcohol sales. Thank so you. Specific on-site consumption, it'd be, it's a separate lounge um, right off the retail um, section. So it has a separate entrance. Um, the applicants can speak more to their um, spe specific security protocols that are um, outlined in their narrative. Thank you. Um, I think what I'll do is ask uh, the commissioners if they have any other questions of staff and then go and ask the, um, the applicant to come back on and then have questions of the applicant if that works for folks. So um, Commissioner Cisco. I always have trouble getting to my microphone. <laughs> um, I think it would be helpful if you had staff kind of go over, because uh, we used to have a slide for this when we were initially doing these approvals. We had a slide that, that sort of um, cited what the council went through in terms of their, you know, over a year long process of developing the regulation. So I think it might be helpful to the public to have staff just you know, recite what that process was like, how we got to uh, the regulations that we have right now and what the goals of council were. Um, and then the other thing, we did get the, some late correspondence from uh, Mr. Keegan as uh, the one of the leasing agents for the building. And I think that would be helpful to um, either read to the public or sort of disclose generally um, I mean, I get the sentiment about the school and then there's there's issues about property rights and what, what happened as a result of, between the, the call for this to be a library and where it is right now. So I just think that would be helpful for the public to to hear that if they didn't, um, weren't able to read that in our materials. Good suggestions. Um, so can staff give a summary um, of the cannabis ordinance, the history of the cannabis ordinance. Sure, Thank sure. You. Wait. Oops. Okay, sure. I can I can do that. Um, the the city's cannabis ordinance, of course, tracks or follows with the uh, state's legalization of first medical cannabis and then adult use cannabis. Um, but in general, on uh, in January of 2016, the uh, city council directed staff to prepare a uh, cannabis ordinance to provide comprehensive regulations for, at that time, the medical cannabis use. Additionally, the council reconvened the medical cannabis policy subcommittee that I believe had been established um, perhaps in 2010, 2012 timeframe. And then staff also convened a technical advisory committee to support development of a comprehensive ordinance. The draft ordinance was initially published in June of 2017 and later amended and republished in October of the same year. And uh, then the adopted comprehensive cannabis ordinance that this project was reviewed under uh, was amended and reviewed by Planning Commission and City Council who considered all technical review, public feedback and subcommittee direction received to date. So following over 20 uh, council policy subcommittee meetings several uh, tax sessions, a public forum, an extensive public outreach and discussion, including uh, notifications sent to 12,000 emails uh, via the city's um, email service, social media notifications next door, Facebook and press releases, uh, KSRO interviews um, in the morning and on the drive, uh, as well as news articles in the Press Democrat uh, and the Chronicle, and then outreach to real estate, fire and building code officials, school representatives, neighborhood groups, uh, cannabis business representatives, non-cannabis business community, and trade organizations. Uh, staff developed then a theme of comments that emerged and presented these to planning commission and city council for discussion. Uh, from the residents and general public perspective, Key themes included odor from outdoor personal cultivation, but not uh, commercial cultivation. And then just a uh, confusion over how the um, cultivation would be calculated. 
So the industry uses, um, and some municipalities will use a canopy calculation versus a square footage. Then um, school representatives and youth advocates uh, were concerned about setbacks from schools and uh, sought an increased setback to 1,000 feet. They sought to extend the, youth, the uh, setback to youth facilities and daycare centers. The state was only requiring a setback from K through 12 um, schools. And they opposed outdoor cultivation abutting school property. And then the cannabis industry sought to reduce the uh, distance between retail facilities to a 600 feet and then to allow for adult use businesses in the ordinance. And finally, the general business community was concerned about over concentration factors. So all of these concerns were presented to planning commission and discussed in detail. Uh, I recall and, and others recall in particular and uh, commissioner, some of you who may have been on the commission at the time would recall extensive discussion about setbacks from schools. Uh, and that discussion continued to the city council as well as, as a, a discussion about over concentration concerns. The, um, the, the odor mitigation concerns were addressed by the ordinance, which requires mitigation of odor to a level undetectable outside of buildings, as well as the fact that the city does not allow outdoor commercial cultivation. So any outdoor cultivation that one might experience as the result of personal outdoor cultivation for personal use that's allowed by state law. Um, and then in, uh, in December 2017, the council voted to adopt the comprehensive cannabis ordinance that of course was recommended for approval with comments by the planning commission. And that became effective in January of 2018. Uh, since then, the, uh, the city did add on adult use to the uh, cannabis ordinance when, when it was adopted by the state uh, as policy. And while the ordinance does allow cannabis retail land use in general commercial zoning districts, um, all cannabis land uses are allowed in industrial zoning districts. And throughout the city, we do require a minimum 600 foot setback from schools, excuse me, which is also the minimum required by state law. And, and as well, we address the over concentration of retail facilities as was described this evening by requiring a minimum of 600 feet between retail facilities. So I hope that's, that's sufficient as a summary. And then of course, uh, Planning Commission has had a wealth of experience in reviewing um, projects proposed retail as well as other cannabis land uses that have required major conditional use permits. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Triple, if you wouldn't mind also just citing how council took this up as a, as a priority tier goal for establishing the businesses just so uh, and uh, throughout the city. So again, the public. Sure. Uh, of here. course. Right. So when when in 2016, when when uh, council voted to uh, pursue the legalization of cannabis in the city of Santa Rosa, uh, it made it a tier one goal, which is one is a highest priority goal for the city. Uh, this was not done just in response to um, perceived um, public desire for legalization of cannabis, but it was also viewed, uh, from my understanding, as development of an economic subsector uh, to contribute to the city's uh, economic success. So it, it has always been viewed as a development of the industry uh, with economic environmental um, goals of, of advancing um, the city's, that, that industry for, for those purposes. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. I'm sure, gonna put thank you. you. <laughs> and um, Commissioner Cisco also had a, um, mentioned the letter from Mr. Keegan. Sure, I think that um, Kristen A, were you able to find the comments? Uh, because you wanted the, the the comments read, correct? Commissioner Cisco, what was your uh, request? Uh, my request was that um, it be made uh, public if it hadn't been already. Um, and I doubt there was time for Spanish translation, but it's an important um, sort of historical piece about property ownership, how we got from the maybe one imagining that 
use as a library versus now it's under lease with, with, with this particular use. So just know how that, that, that came to be. Sure, so I think that uh, we can, if we go ahead and summarize that uh, communication for the record, then uh, my understanding is that it would be translated into Spanish and, and so it could be shared with the, the community as part of this, um, this discussion. So, and then I also believe it was shared as late correspondence, so it will be included in the public record of this meeting. So on September 23rd, uh, the city received correspondence from Mr. Brian Keegan with Keegan and Copen Company. And uh, he was the uh, broker who, who listed the property for lease. And he described um, sort of the chronology of the leasing activity for the property. And he did indicate that in July of 2020, um, that he had participated in a tour or, or hosted a tour rather of the property for city officials. And um, that then uh, in checking back in and, and communicating with the city, and not having a response about uh, the city's position on the property. Then um, in January, 2021 was engaged with the current tenant um, who eventually entered into contract for lease of the property. So the city's, uh, the city's position at this point in time is that the project before you under review uh, has submitted an application and that the focus should be on review of the application that's before the planning commission today. Great, thank you. Um, any questions from the commissioners um, for staff before we hear, before we go to the applicant for questions? So um, are there any other questions for staff? And then if we could have the applicant back. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. So um, I have Andrew from our team here, and he's um, going to be answering questions from you guys. Okay. This thank evening. You. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Longman, I have a couple of questions. Um, one has to do, uh, we heard a lot from the public about outreach to the community, and I wondered, um, I know what the city did as far as notifying the neighborhood. Um, I wondered if um, you as, the app, as an applicant team did any community. Um, Ms. Rivera did talk about a tour that she did, um, but wondered what else was there. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, apologies. I'm having a hard time with my audio over here. Can you please repeat the question? Sure. Um, can you tell me what type of community outreach you did? Um, Ms. R Rivera mentioned a tour that she did, but I wondered what else there was. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So first, um, just to introduce myself, my name is Andrew Longman. I'm with 421 Group, a local cannabis consultancy. I've been assisting the applicant through the applicant process. Just wanted to state my name for the record. Um, so for as far as community outreach goes, over a, you know, a multi-week span, uh, we canvassed the neighborhood. Uh, I believe you should have a map uh, in the neighborhood outreach plan uh, that we submitted to all of you. Um, and uh, on, on those occasions, we canvassed both bilingual, uh, bilingually to, to make sure we were reaching out and, and getting as many people as we could uh, aware of our projects so we can have conversations about it. Um, we also held a community meeting last Wednesday uh, and uh, to, that was held bilingually as well. Uh, at the facility. Uh, and uh, during those events, uh, we gathered, I, I submitted uh, the petition uh, in support of the project uh, to you guys as well. And uh, we, we gathered upwards of uh, 30, 35 signatures, I believe, 30 or 35 signatures. Okay. Uh, any anything else you'd like to add on that item? 
Um, well, when we uh, had the original posting for the project, um, we we did, you know, it, it not being in Spanish for the, the neighborhood, we did see that as an issue. And, and, and we do really want to just thank uh, the commission for taking the time to delay this meeting so it could be properly noticed. We, we really do appreciate that. Um, we did put a secondary sign up next to the notice originally. Uh, I'd say probably for the last three days of the notice uh, in Spanish, asking to reach out to Naeli uh, and with with her personal number uh, to discuss the project if if people felt compelled to do so. Thank you. Um, and there was also a question about the the name of the uh, the name of the uh, facility being um, old school cannabis, and wondered if you had any response around that. Yeah, I, my main response is that there was absolutely no offense meant, and and if we offended anyone with that name choice, uh, it was not intended, and we would be more than happy to change that name. Uh, to something more suitable and more fitting for the community. Thank you. Um, let's see. I think I oh, um, there. I think it was Ms. Tumians when I, I quest, when I asked her a question about odor mitigation. She mentioned that perhaps the um, applicant could have you know, a contact info available for the public um, and wondered if what you thought about uh, something like that. I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, we've, we've already drafted the good neighbor policy uh, for this project. And I think making that publicly present in some way uh, at the facility is a great idea. Great, thank you. Um, any questions from uh, Vice Chair Peterson? Uh, so we had a, an entire uh, planning commission meeting on this several years ago, so it doesn't need to be that detailed. But uh, since the public raised the concern, I was wondering if you could briefly talk about and briefly talk about uh, the volatile aspect of the manufacturing and uh, the risk of explosions, fires, pollution. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so we'll be using a uh, standalone. Uh, prefab uh, building uh, for the 500 square foot manufacturing. It's C1, D1 rated uh, for such uh, volatile extraction. Um, it is, you know, compliant with uh, FDCA, that's the Food Drug uh, Cosmetic Act, uh, clo closed loop system to minimize any such explosions. Um, it, these systems have advanced. I, I know we've all uh, in the past have those, heard those horror stories of people doing extractions in their basements and the, the horrible things that could potentially happen. But th these systems have come a long way uh, in, in recent times. And, and I, I, I do feel that it is, it is safe. And, and, and um, I, I think we'd you'd be very impressed with, with what we'd be building there. Are, are they used outside of the cannabis industry? Uh, these, I have not seen uh, these specific setups used outside of the, the cannabis industry. I mean, volatile extraction in general using uh, either, you know, petroleum based stuff. Oh, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sorry. Any other questions um, for uh, Commissioner Holton? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question about regarding cannabis consumption. What's your current policy on uh, cutoff limits or duration of stay? Actually, that's a, the first question is, do you have a duration of stay requirement for folks consuming cannabis on site? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great question. Um, so as of right now, uh, of course, you know, we're still tinkering with this, but the idea right now is a 30 minute stay cap. Uh, uh, and, and it's totally going to be subject to the capacity at the, you know, of, of the facility at that time. Um, you know, we're going to have security guards who are trained in, you know, identifying those who are inebriated. Uh, we're going to have ample signages at the, at, at the facility to deter any reckless behaviors. If, if, if this were smoking, strictly smoking, I wouldn't be concerned. However, due to the fact that you are ingesting cannabis, it's a much, much more delayed reaction, especially when it's a higher concentration. So if you have somebody that's going ahead and consuming 
you know, four or five, 10 milligram gummies. And then they're like a half hour later, they're like, I'm cool. They go out to their car, jump in their car and they're passed out at the stoplight. You know, I, I just think that that, uh, that policy should definitely be rethought. I, I support everything else. I just, I, I think that the on-site consumption is piece of it, implement of it is a major concern for me. And let's not do on-site consumption absolutely. and make that an event center. Absolutely, and and I we would absolutely rethink that policy. I, and I, I actually really appreciate your feedback. Um, I, it, we, it is not our intent to ever have anyone get behind the, the wheel of a vehicle after consuming cannabis at our facility. That is the last thing that we want. Yeah, and uh, are you and guys going to be doing like uh, like drinks or anything like that as well, like doing a drink bar, where you guys would do like hash-infused or cannabis-infused drinks? The idea, yeah, yes, definitely. Like beef and, and stuff like that, you guys will be serving those there as well? Uh, the idea is to serve beverages, uh, okay. you know, edibles, and and yes, so that is a huge concern. Like I, I definitely just consider to fine tune that piece before that's a like a part of the entire you know package. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that feedback. And and I just want to say one more thing. You know the um, the intent. You know. This location is is so great for on-site consumption. Uh, for one main reason is it's it's proximity to public transportation, being so close to the smart train station, being so close to multiple bus stops. We really see this being used more so by the community on foot traffic. But I do not want to minimize your concern at all, and we will definitely get yeah. the drawing board and make sure we hit those points. Not to mention, it's really close to all the really, really amazing property is down there. So, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Tumian, thank, thank you. Did, did you want to talk a little bit more about the volatile issue? Yes, I just wanted to address uh, Vice Chair Peterson's question that um, the, clo the closed loop extraction system that's used for volatile manufacturing is not unique to the cannabis manufacturing industry. And it's been used uh, for decades in the perf in, uh, to produce perfume, food additives, beauty products, coffee, a variety of um, food related uses. It's not unique to um, cannabis, but it, um, being that it's um, part of the cannabis uh, manufacturing process, there's a lot more regulation placed upon um, cannabis operators who use that system versus um, the other uses I mentioned. Yes, thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, Ms. Commissioner Duggan? And yeah, this might be um, more for staff than the applicant, but what does the state law say as far as on-site consumption locations? Do they have any regulations or requirements or, you know, duration of stay or what can be consumed or, you know, I'm, I don't think we've ever heard that part of it or if we have, I, I can't remember what we've heard, so. Christine, did you like me to? Or, or Andrew? Um, sure, I was, I was uh, Commissioner Duggan, I was just going to say that um, our, our regulations are consistent with, with state law to the extent that there's local enforcement of state law. Um, the state does have inspectors. And so uh, to my knowledge, the only state regulation is that it can't be consumed in view of the public. And then, of course, you would have to be over 21 years of age to enter the facility. But uh, Mr. Longman may be um, likely is more current on state law. That is exactly what I was going to say. In addition, um, the sale or consumption of alcohol and tobacco is not allowed on the premises. And this comes from the state law in the Business and Professions Code. Thank you, Ms. Crocker. Uh, other questions for staff or the applicant? Okay, then um, if somebody would like to uh, read the resolution and then we can have discussion. Commissioner Duggan. I will move a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa approving a conditional use permit for old school cannabis to allow 2,350 square foot feet of retail dispensary 
with delivery and on-site consumption, 17,120 square feet for commercial cultivation, 5,001 square feet or greater, 870 square feet for distribution, 500 square feet of manufacturing level two, two volatile within an existing building located at 100 Sebastopol Road, assessor's parcel number 125-181-023, file number CUP21-027 and wait for the reading. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Uh, I'll second. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Peterson. That was moved by Commissioner Duggan, uh, seconded by Vice Chair Peterson. So now we'll go to the commission for discussion. Um, we'll start alphabetically. Uh, Commissioner Carter. Yeah, I wish my name started with a W today. <laughs> uh, this has been uh, an enlightening session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the staff for the for recommending um, a delay of the project so that uh, more community outreach could happen so that we could arrange for translation services and really get the community involved. While I'm certain there's a number of other uses that are desirable for Roseland, um, uh, what we have here is one use and a, a use permit that we're being asked to consider for that particular use. Um, the use uh, has been analyzed as being consistent with uh, city policy, and I do believe staff did an excellent job in that analysis that it is consistent with the zoning, the general plan, and the uh, Roseland area specific plan. Uh, I think the, the necessary findings that we have to make also include a finding that it's compatible with local land use beyond the uh, letter of the, the code. Um, so we need to take into consideration everything that goes on around this use. Um, my biggest concern is that while the, the property is zoned industrial and we, we have seen many industrial sites developed for um, cannabis use positively here in Rosewood, there is a preponderance of residential use existing and in the future that could occur near this. And it's, a, and it's an extremely large uh, facility that we're considering. So those are my primary considerations is the, the actual compatibility based on the regulations and what we've heard from the community tonight. So um, in general, I'm supportive of um, cannabis facilities, including grow and operate in manufacturing facilities. I've seen uh, the controls that are put on it, uh, contain it to the activities that are supposed to be there. And, and I have faith that our ordinance adequately controls them, but it's really hard to, could, to ignore the community sentiment that we've heard. The fact that it was a school, I'm afraid, is somewhat irrelevant. The, the academy exists, and there's not currently a school use proposed for the site. So based on what we've heard about the proposed specific use before us um, and the community sentiment, I, I'm doubtful that I can support it entirely. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sisko? Well, I'd like to offer up some um, with what you're saying, Carter, and some of what I've heard read, uh, as comments. Uh, in particular, the conflict between um, industrial uses and... Um, Commissioner Cisco, you're, you're cutting in and out. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I think if you sit closer. <laughs> closer. Okay, so what... I do is, um, you know, the issue of conflict between uh, industrial and residential uses. And uh, I don't know if you drove all the way down Timothy Road, but in that cul-de-sac at the end of, cul uh, of Timothy Road exists um, a planned development sweat equity project, which was built and populated over 20 years ago. It was all surrounded by industrial uses. 
the Timothy Commons, the Burbank uh, Avenue project came later, but they're right there up against the industrial uses. The project that we just saw um, before us across the street are all residential uses. And so I think it's it's the type of industry uh, and the, that can be more or less compatible. We just don't have the luxury of separating out industrial uses from re residential. So we have to do our best to, to um, have compatibility. That zoning is industrial. So if this cannabis facility wasn't there, large or small, another uh, industrial use could go there, which is going to be in the midst of older housing and the new housing that's uh, under construction right now, the village station. So, um, and you know, if you really want to go back, the village station used to be uh, completely uh, general industrial. It was a fish processing plant and housing developed <laughs> around it um, because that's how it went. And we, the, the citizens endured. Uh, this is a use that uh, because of all of the regulations uh, it, its ability to be noxious is pretty pretty well wiped out, um, and so uh, so I, I would just offer that as something to to consider. Um, the other thing that that's happening along the uh, along Sebastopol Road there, um, it, it's we're, we're springing up with all of the neighborhood serving uses that we all ask for when we when we do our general plans and we, you know the community comes out and, and, and maps out what they want they want neighborhood serving uses well we have along that strip the butcher shop a little bakery um the live work units uh that exist there at one time i think it got lost as a result of covid sadly was a florist shop there was a, a martial arts center um the village station is currently finally finishing up their uh, their live work units, the frontage of Sebastopol Road, and the marketing in the real estate uh, section of the PD talks about its time has come because of COVID, because people are working more remotely. So that whole strip along there is a mix of housing and, and um, activity uh, generating potential, you know, work uses. Um, the village station will be undergrounding their uh, utilities and this project would continue that. So the frontage along the Sebastopol Road with this project um, would continue that. And, and frankly, the retail portion, which would be on Sebastopol Road is a neighborhood serving use. It's walkable to get your, you know, your cannabis medicinally or recreationally. It is close to uh, the train and uh, the bus stop. So um, I see I see that as, as, as really important. Um, Mr. Herb's uh, concerns, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Herb. He's been around a long time <laughs> dealing with the toxics in the area, but the, the, this project would not prohibit the development of the Roberts Avenue area. And most of you know how I feel about the Roberts Avenue area and how badly I want it to develop and, uh, and appreciate the land uses that got put into place uh, when we did the downtown uh, station area plan. The, the problem that, that that particular developer will have is the toxics. It's not what's across the street. What's across the street, I think, can only um, maybe inspire uh, somebody to develop there. And the toxics are serious. Uh, one of the reasons why the village station, which was approved about 20 years ago, it's finally uh, in its last phases, was because of the toxics and running into a number of different iterations of, okay, we, it's clean. Well, no, it's not. So it's a serious problem. And, um, and I appreciate Mr. Herb's uh, ability and responsibility to, to trying to deal with that and get grants to clean it up. Um, but that's not going to prevent any development. Um, when it, you know, we, we make our findings and, you know, we usually say I can make the findings and typically, you know, the ones that are more concrete, it fits the general plan, it fits the, uh, 
the zoning code it's uh, operationally correct with our ordinances and the ones that we usually get more uh discussion on are finding c where we're the characteristic, uh, the design location and operating characteristics of the proposed activity would be compatible with the existing and future land uses uh, in the vicinity. And I really believe I can totally make that finding because I think it is consistent in terms of being both a neighborhood serving um, retail frontage on Sebastopol Road, but the industrial part, and it does create nobody's driving anywhere they're growing they're manufacturing and you know they're putting it there so so to me that's um it, it's a unique piece of property and i think that uh, this particular applicant is, is making a really uh, good use of it um the other one that we typically struggle with with the findings is the no nuisance and again what we have seen over time is how secure and safe these particular um uses have been um this it's right on the railroad tracks uh, there are plenty of issues that go on <laughs> at night around there and to have the built-in security and activity there to me uh, is is only a plus for for the area so um for that reason and uh and others again i, I appreciate staff going through what what the council uh went through in terms of developing the ordinance, establishing, establishing it as a priority, establishing that these uses are spread throughout the city. And, we, and we're seeing that this, this isn't a Roseland dumping ground project. Uh, this, you know, we've, we've put things out in the, on the east side and, and continue to do so and want to do so. So in, in my opinion, um, given uh, what's in front of us tonight and maybe lost opportunities uh, but th what's in front of us tonight I think is a good use I can completely make the findings um, and so I'll be voting to approve the project thank you uh, Commissioner Duggan now at this time I can say I'm, I'm happy that uh, Commissioner Cisco is between Commissioner Carter and myself because I think um, you laid out a very compelling argument that we are here to um, decide land uses and I can also make all of the findings. Um, I hear the community and what they wish for, but unfortunately we don't um, generate these projects. We consider project applications from private developers and this one is consistent with all the required findings we can make. Um, and also I think it would be helpful for future applications for any cannabis dispensary if we had a map includes included in the um, project application and then the, um, the planner's um, presentation showing the dispersal of where these uh, dispensaries are located throughout the city because we are trying to get them in all four quadrants and we are starting to achieve that but you know there's one on college avenue that's going to be developed um, on the edge of a historic neighborhood there's the one in, on um, bethards and yulupa way out in bennett valley so we're not just trying to foist these on um, poor neighborhoods that don't have um, have other kinds of goods and services. So I am uh, in support of the project. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Holton. Uh, I really love going after Commissioner Duggan, Commissioner Carter, and now Commissioner Cisco. thank you so much for basically making it so I can be as concise as possible. Um, I'm also in support of this project. I can make all the required findings for sure. Uh, I really, what one thing that really resonated with me, I just wanted to share. There was a caller who mentioned how she had hoped that it would come to her community so that it could clean up her area so that she would feel safe walking her child down the street. You know, that's the thing is that we've got a lot of undeveloped areas and a lot of areas that are just not being taken care of by the property owners. And to have a place like this where somebody is going to really put their heart and soul into it, and they're also going to keep everything local, you know, that's really great that they'll be doing everything from, you know, distribute or manufacturing, distribution, cultivation. I mean, it's just great. So thank you very much. I'm in support of this project. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Peterson. 
Uh, well, you know, it's it's nice to to go now and and have all the a lot of the issues very ably handled by my fellow commissioners. Um, I will try and speak slowly for the the sake of the translator. Um, I, I do want to thank everybody that that came out um, and gave us their time to, to give their perspective on this. Um, I think it's easy. We've seen. I don't know, dozens <laughs> at this point, and, and it can, can be kind of, you know, rote at a point. But I think that this is still a new issue relatively, certainly relative to, to alcohol and bars and things like that. And uh, I think we're going to see um, these same issues crop up e each time we, we kind of, a, a new applicant goes into a, a new part of town. So um, I think it is important to kind of define the Planning Commission's role. I mean, Commissioner Cisco discussed this a bit, but we, as did Commissioner Carter, we're, we don't really set policy. So certainly there are other uses that may be um, better or more desirable that could go in here, but based on the record we've got, no one was interested. Um, we had the letter from you know, the, lease, the leasing company that said, you know, we've been showing it for almost two years and, and nobody bit before them. So, um, you know, what we've got is, is this application. We've got to make certain findings based on sort of the rules that were set forth by the, you know, the elected city council in the, the state of California. And so I don't think it's really our role to kind of pick and choose what would, what would be best is it's just, does this project meet the requirements? And I think in this case it does. Um, and I, I think I can make all the re required findings. I do want to kind of explain um, my reasoning on this just for the public. Um, you know, you know, why cannabis? Why here? I mean, Commissioner Cisco pointed out this was a tier one priority for the city council. You know, this was something that they set out to get done and said, listen, this is what we want in the city. And this is the policy. There was, as you heard from uh, Mr. Triple, there was a lot of debate that went into that, this, the ordinance that we're looking at now that, that sets the rules for this project. And, you know, we had a lot of stakeholder input. And I think one of the key things is that, as has been discussed already, it's to distribute these throughout the city. We don't want a sort of red light district for cannabis in, in Santa Rosa. And we also don't want to induce traffic. And so um, not that it's been been easy or smooth all the time, but we have, you know, approved projects in Bennett Valley, in Rankin Valley. Um, you know, I've, I've approved projects that are, you know, relatively close to my own house. Um, so it, it's certainly not something that I think is being parked in, in Roseland or that Roseland is being taken advantage of um, in this case. I know there's a, a long history of that, and I think the city is is working to rectify that. But I think this particular issue um, isn't isn't one of them. Um, I, I think on the security front, this does sort of paradoxically improve the security of the neighborhood. I think you've got more eyes, you've got dedicated security, you've got cameras, you just, you've got people there and people being there with eyes out will result in a, a safer community, I think, for everybody. Um, I, I do agree with my fellow commissioners. I Look, I don't love on-site consumption, um, but that's what the ordinance allows. And also bars are legal. I mean, you know, there's bars in this neighborhood where people can go and have a couple drinks and, you know, <laughs> drive off onto the Highway 12. I mean, it's it's just sort of the nature of, of what we're faced with. And um, I would hope that the applicant takes steps to, you know, prevent issues that may come out of that. But right now it's, that's, that's the rule. And, you know, I, I don't see a, a basis for me to kind of overrule that. Um, so sort of with all that, that's where I, I, I end up. I think, you know, it, it's not an easy decision, but I think in light of the rules, in light of what we've seen before, um, I can I can make the findings uh, to to support this project. Thank you. Um, I don't really have anything much to add. Um, I think it is good to remind uh, the public and ourselves that we don't make the policy that we. Um, 
our role is to implement the policy of the city of Santa Rosa and that they, um, as Mr. Triple detailed, um, there was a there was a great deal of public outreach and uh, um, and meetings and discussions about this ordinance. Um, I do um, really want to thank the community for coming out um, for this uh, and um, I do feel that I can make all the findings um, as outlined in the resolution. So, so with that, um, it the ordinance was. I'm sorry. The resolution was um, moved by Commissioner Duggan and seconded by Vice Chair Peterson. Um, Mr. Maloney, if you would like to call roll. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Start with Commissioner Carter. Aye. Commissioner Cisco. Aye. Commissioner Duggan. Aye. Commissioner Holton. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson. Aye. And Chair Weeks. Aye. So that uh, passes with six ayes, and I believe that that is. The last item for us tonight, unless um, Mr. Triple has anything else for us. No, Chair Weeks, I think we're good. Thank you all for your time this evening. Uh, we greatly appreciate your your commitment to the city and uh, to your role on Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, we'll see you at the next meeting. Good night. <laughs>